Hey, everybody out there. Yes, it's time for another happy hour. What's the tea? What's the tea? What's the tea? What's the tea? Hey, Amanda. What's the tea out there on Twitter? What's the tea out there YouTube? Tori B, what's the tea? Child, it's a lot going on right now. It's a monsoon outside, and um, they cutting up um, okay. Anne Marie and them. Um, yeah, well, we're going to get into it. So we hope that you guys are safe in the monsoon, wherever you are, Tori We hope that you're safe. Uh, make sure that you guys coming on in or liking the video, subscribing to the channel if you haven't already, and uh, getting your notification bell on. We thank you, Amanda, for being in the room early. We appreciate that. And we're going to get right into it. There's just so much mess going on that we're going to go ahead and get it crunk. So let's get it crunk, in the words of any leaks. Are you drinking this week for happy hour? Tori, are you laying off the liquor this week? What you got going on? No, I got me no. some Prosecco. Okay. Oh. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Ooh. Look at me. I got an empty glass, y'all, but it's going to be full. I know how we like to get it going. Uh, you know, it's just so much, right? So much. So let's just go ahead and get it crunk. Let's go ahead and start with probably one of the most infuriating Real Housewives reunions that I've seen in recent memory, the Real Housewives of Potomac uh, season eight, episode one reunion air this past Sunday. Everybody's given their take on it and here's ours. But before we start, it definitely was Candace versus the Green Eyed Bandits. Let's take a quick look. I, uh, I don't have any tissue. I do. Oh, <laughs> not tears. Giselle. Tears. <laughs> I do. Ah, <laughs> Child, we did a quick look because we don't need Bravo yanking his stuff down. So I think we can't do but 10 or 15 seconds of it. So we gave you what we could. However, um, if you have not seen it, I don't even know if I would encourage you to watch it because there are trigger warnings all over the place for this particular reunion. Tori B. I know you're probably going to lose a gasket, but um, when we talk about Candace versus the Green Knight Bandits, um, we talked about Candace and Robin's issue. And so I wanted to know before we get started on Candace and Giselle, which it was a big trigger for a lot of people, where were you in relation to Candace and Robin? I mean, I hate the fact that Giselle and Robin was sitting right next to each other. I feel like that only made the situation worse. Um, but Candace and Robin, Candace just needs to let it go, right? The relationship isn't there. And to me, for her to bring up something that has already been debunked, um, it's just even more disgusting. Like this girl admitted to lying. Why are you still talking about it? And she admitted to lying way before the reunion was even taped. So I'm trying to figure out, like, what was her point in saying that? Talking about this man's... I can't even repeat what she said. Robin's disgusting to me. That's how I feel about Robin. Um, well, do you think that her performance that we've saw so far... Um, uh, part one of the reunion is fire worthy. Like, do you agree with the uh, decision to allegedly not bring her back? She gave us nothing. Mia done gave her a first class, um, gave her a class on how to do it. And you knew, right? How many seasons this is the eighth season? You didn't think you should be telling this story. You don't think you thought it was okay to put the tea behind Patreon. I think it's very disrespectful, and I think she thinks she's uh, privileged, just like Giselle. That's what I feel like. And I think her behaving like that and Juan not attending, and it's just so flippant, and she 100% don't care and all of that, we see it, which is why you were fired. And I agree that you should have been fired. I didn't even want you to come back. <laughs> Andy gave you a chance to come back and tell your story, and you still gave nothing. So, no, it's time for her to go. I wish it was Giselle, um, but, you know, Giselle's her boss. So, I mean, what can you say? Well, is Giselle her boss or is Giselle the boss 
is the is the question that I have because it seems like, and we're gonna get into Giselle in just a little bit. Trust me, believe you me. As we just saw that clip, let me get my camera together, child. Y'all know I don't have no production assistants. Hey, to the people. <laughs> Ow, <laughs> baby, I got to figure out is uh, baby is the camera? That's on good. Y'all no, no, it's good. Has the camera been drinking? Okay, it's good. All right. So here's what you know, and I'm gonna go ahead and just lay it out. For Robin Dixon and where I stand on her as a whole, and I, I don't really have much of an opinion in the way of Robin Dixon versus Candace, right? But what I will say is we're getting ready to go ahead and go down the timeline and do some math. Are you ready? Go ahead. So season seven airs and season seven is the attack on Giselle, excuse me, the attack on uh, Candace and Chris and Giselle saying that Chris made her go into a room and made her feel uncomfortable, right? And so then after the reunion airs, or they film the reunion, right? As the season is concluding, we get the tea about the Patreon and uh, uh, Juan, uh, you know, having these alleged mishaps with these mistresses, Canada girl, hotel girl, coach, the coach girl, all these girls, right? And so as we come into this season and Robin is charged with answering um, to what happened and not being forthcoming and being judicious in what she chooses to share in the words of Candace Dillard Bassett, the timeline that she gives is this is something that that was not concurrently happening during the season. This is something that happened months and was resolved months before season seven began to film. And so there was no need for her to bring it to story, right? Is that what she said? Am I correct? That's what she said. Okay. Now let's go back to season six. What was Robin's storyline, if you do remember? Do you remember? It was her being depressed because of the pandemic. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Her she was being selling them bed. damn hats. Uh-huh. Her but but mainly her being in bed and Juan feeling like that was unattractive, that she would be in the bed all day and not have the kids out. And even so much so that Giselle chimed in and said, it is unattractive for a woman to sit in, at home all day and do absolutely nothing, right? And here's what I call on Robin's excuse for um, it happening months and so before season seven started, and that's why she didn't bring it up, right? She's absolutely right. And I absolutely 100% believe that it did happen months before season seven started. And that's why she didn't bring it into season seven. What I do not believe, though, now looking back on it, is that she was so depressed that she couldn't get out of bed due to the pandemic. It was because you knew that man was cheating on you. Yep. And so we watched it happen. She just didn't give it to us. Yep. And so for that, my dearie, you do deserve to be fired. Allegedly, I don't know if she is fired, if she's not fired. Um, but what I will say is that coupled with the fact that you expected Karen to bring it up, coupled with the fact that, well, excuse me, tripled with the fact that she put it behind the Patreon wall, quadrupled behind the fact that you um, were so defensive and didn't want to discuss it. And then what's fifth coupled, quintupled, I guess it is, the fact that the man wouldn't even see it so much for you as to bring his ass to that reunion and come and sit and answer those questions to secure your paycheck because it's not just your paycheck. That paycheck is what the paycheck that feeds that entire family because if I remember correctly, she said that her man was going around um, volunteering at basketball. So to me, that sounds like a man that want to live off a woman. Yeah. Thank you for volunteering at my child's school, but that don't bring in no bills to be paid. So thank you for being active in my child's life. Now, could you be active in the, everybody's life? Since we are together and this is a real marriage and we really do love each other. We don't know if it's a real marriage. We don't know if it's a real marriage. We don't. Well, no, I'm, I'm saying because she says it is. So I'm not going to tell her it's not, right? Well, you I'm know, they've gonna... been calling him the roommate forever. So, I mean. But, but, but Tori, let me tell you what I'm not going to do, right? They battling... too broke to be a part. But wait, but battling <laughs> common sense with somebody who does not live in, in, in common sense world is lunacy and it's insane. So if she says that her marriage is real and if she says that her marriage is not a farce, then guess what? I'll go ahead and give it to you despite what I believe because that's one less point I have to argue with you. Child. Do I believe it's real? I believe it's real to her. I know Carlos and Heavenly chewed his ass up 
on their well, well, because, you know, I don't know what Carlos and Heavenly said, but what I will say, sorry, y'all, I kind of gave me y'all business, but anyway, um, what I will say is that's some hater ass shit. And you want to know why Rod Juan Dixon is a hater? Yeah. You're so used to being the star in that relationship. You're so used to being the breadwinner in that relationship. You're so angry that she allegedly is the reason why you um, guys went through that bankruptcy period. And not only did she put you through the bankruptcy period, she pulled you out of it. That's right. resentment. He said on a hot mic years ago that he does not want to be with her. And if it wasn't for the kids, he wouldn't be with her. I know. That, that's bitterness. Well, she looked resentment. over it. And she still married him. So that's her Delulu ass. But like, wait a minute. But I'm talking about Juan. But Juan is bitter. He is resentful of the fact that he is not the breadwinner and that she was the one who put him in that predicament. But she was also the one to bring him out. And she is the one that has consistently put food on that table for years. And if Juan Dixon had a viable means of income in a way that he could live comfortably without Robin Dixon, he will do so. You're right. But he doesn't. So he's beholden to her. He's stuck to her. That's his punishment. He don't want to pay child support. <laughs> could he pay child support? I ask you, is it a coincidence? I ask you, do you think he could make the payment? A lot of men think it's cheaper to keep her. Just, it just is what it is. Like, obviously, she don't care that he cheat. We only care because it's on, you know, it's, it's public knowledge. It's embarrassing. She, if sorry. she wasn't on the show, she wouldn't address it at all. You understand what I'm saying? Like, you got to understand she's not embarrassed by this. She thinks, you know, she puts up with it. That's not true. Uh, that, from what I've seen, from the way that she deals with things, she is definitely embarrassed by it. She's just not going to give us the luxury and satisfaction of her giving into that embarrassment. But her actions, her yelling, her screaming, her standing on couches, oh my God. Her, you know, you know, the way he talks to us camera. crazy too, though. I, mm -hmm. That conversation that they had earlier this season, where he was, she was complaining. I think when they was in Texas. I don't She's care about these women, Robin. Well, you need this check. You need to act like you you care about something. Mm -mm, but let me tell you what. You don't care about they, your career either. She's so conjoined to a person that is so used to getting away with anything and getting her way that because she is in cahoots with the devil herself, Giselle, that she thinks that the Giselle clause applies to her and she is going to find out regardless of whether they keep her or not, that it doesn't. And the word on the street is they didn't keep her ass and I'm inclined to believe the word on the street. And those are the words going around Giselle streets catch. I'm inclined to believe those words because the word on the street is and her ass won't be back. And I'm inclined she to She hasn't believe. made any public statement about it. Interesting. She hasn't made <laughs> Hey, Ricky. Ricky says she is not Giselle. And you are not Giselle. Because if anybody deserves to be fired, I would venture to say it's not even Robin Dixon. It's Giselle Bryant. They send Giselle deserves to be Giselle. fired. Yeah. Uh -huh. They send a message to Giselle, though. Well, she learned her message when she's... Well, who's sitting right here? Not you. That was her lesson. And did she wake up? So let me ask you this. Was Giselle activated or was she just like, where did you land on this? Because I'm somewhere in between. She was activated. Well, how about this? Out of 100%? Oh, she was 30% definitely activated more than she's ever been in her entire life on that show because she was fighting for her life once she saw her seat. But it was just the meanest, nastiest, vilest display that I kind of was in awe of it. So what did you think about Giselle versus Candace? She's not witty. She's not funny. She can't think of anything clever to say. So she sat there and cackled her. Not the fake tears. Not the fake tears. You know, like, I mean, you know, I, she's just a nasty, vile and Candace shouldn't apologize for S-H-I-T. What is there to apologize for? So then you let me ask you this. absolutely did say that man touched Deborah's butt. And nobody told you that. You added that sauce. That is claiming he sexually assaulted somebody. I mean, yeah. We're looking at the long and the short of it. That's what it is. And 
semantics are semantics, but yeah. you said he made you go in a room and you don't recall. And Andy, Andy, this production team and you are not doing y'all due diligence. Okay. The only thing you said to Giselle, well, Giselle, that was really me. Like, come on, Andy, the audience is doing a better job than your own production team. So I'm, I'm very, you know, you should pay the audience because they know better than the production company. Why are we only getting flashbacks of stuff Candace and Wendy did, but nothing that Robin or Giselle did? Please answer me that question. Uh, again, I think that this show's problem will be solved, would be solved with one simple fell soup of getting rid of Giselle. I, you know, and I also think I saw how defeated Candace was in that moment. She realized there was going to be nothing that she could do. No amount of cussing out was going to work. No amount of tears, fake or not, were going to work. No amount of anything that she was going to do was going to work. And then she has her friend on the show, Wendy, ask her what it is that she could be accountable for. And it's like, Wendy, I get what you're trying to do, but it feels like you're playing devil's advocate for the devil. I didn't like it. I didn't like it. Tori B, this is the second reunion in a row. Where are we landing? Is Wendy a friend to Candace? Answer it. Everybody trying to save their own spot. <laughs> That's what the answer is. So is that a no? Um, I just feel like everybody was forcing Candace to say something. It wasn't just Wendy. It was NECA too. Well, I mean, NECA, are you serious? I'm Please. just, but I'm just, let's call it out. It was NECA too. But NECA need to sit over there and get her hair done. Well, at least her foundation match. That's all I got to say, child. One one fight at a time. Um, but I just, I'm going to be honest with you. I feel like everybody was pressuring Candace to say something. And I didn't see that pressure applied to Giselle. So but everybody why is the burden of proof always on anyone other than Giselle? It's, this is what I'm saying. We all want equity like in this. Like They're all black women. And just because you're a lighter skin tone doesn't make you better or more superior to anybody else. And at this point, it's exhausting to watch. This was the reaction on X. Everybody's like, this is effing crazy. Y'all still sitting here thinking nothing's wrong with this? This is not okay. Two of them are mean girls. Two of them are mean girls. It's cool to have Benton and go back and forth. I mean, it's cool to have mean girls. It's cool to have mean girls, but I think that this hits on such a deep and visceral level that I hate to say this because I don't want people to just think that I'm just like wilding right now. But I don't. I think that first of all, you have to be black to understand why this is so deep and dangerous, right? And then um, you know, you also may have to be a black woman to understand the hurt. I watch it and I'm hurt. So when people are making those TikTok videos, like the young lady made the TikTok video, or the young person, excuse me, made the TikTok video, and she was saying that she refuses to watch as long as Giselle is on the show, and everyone was making fun of her saying that, you know, hey, this is reality TV, and it shouldn't trigger you on that deep of a level. I remember me and uh, Angie K, word up, shout out to Angie K, were hosting the Real Housewives of New York City um, room in Clubhouse, and we were so moved and so hurt and offended by what we watched when Ramona Singer carried her ass out there. And after the food at Black Shabbat, we were like in tears, like super vulnerable, right? In tears, and we said, We're not reviewing the rest of the season, we're done. So, I, I it's reality TV, these are people that we invest in as characters, and we watch them growing, yes. If you are passionate about it enough, you're crazy enough to start a channel on YouTube about it, or you're crazy <laughs> enough to comment about it, and you're crazy enough to, when I say not let it affect your your day-to-day, -day, but when you're watching it, you are, what are we supposed to do? Just sit there and not have reactions to what we're watching? It was nasty. It was vile. It was dirty. Her hollering and screaming and whooping and hollering. And Andy yeah. saying, it's not quite nice, in the words of Kim Richards. Da -da 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 -da. What the F was that, Andy? 
Like, yeah. if that does not score, I think that that sends the message that no matter what seat they put her at, it's going to take, it's going to be hell and high water before we can get Giselle off of this show. She's not going. And if that were to happen anywhere else on just about any other show, she wouldn't have been brought back. I guarantee you. I guarantee you. I don't think nobody hey, got... I don't think nobody got a contract yet. We just know who not. We don't. I don't think we know everybody who ain't coming back because they got some more shots to make. They well, the word on the street that we know so far um, is that Robin allegedly is not coming back. There is more shots to be made. Neca says that she hasn't gotten a contract yet. Uh, As she should not. And Candace has quit allegedly so um i don't oh, know who else do you want to see was neca was responding to people and i definitely i see how much of a non fat the neck is we were supposed to talk about neck today y'all and i forgot to go ahead and bring that up because when neck would go ahead and tweet i would be like five seconds into the sentence like oh my god i think she's making she don't make no damn sense Everybody I wish I had not... those tweets to pull up. So uh, that's on me, y'all, because we definitely were going to get into Neca's yeah, tweets. Yeah, I almost, I forgot to. But what I will say is that girl is very delusional. She's really not taking accountability. She yeah. said Wendy ostracized her <laughs> from the other group. What? You're not going to like this. I know you're not going to like it, but I don't care because I don't yeah. care. Her mama did send her to that train. I don't care what you say. I don't care what y'all. Hey, y'all can watch it right now. When the mama did it. That's all I got to say. When the mama did it. When the mama did it. Oh my God. You just had to say that to you. But when the mama did it. Y'all know when the mama did if, it. Even if she did, what does that got to do with Wendy? Wendy going to smack her mama no for doing it? Like, come on. Her, her mama ain't got nothing to do with her. Nobody can... can a, Nobody can control a black mama. And Amanda, I'm sorry, Amanda. She did it. I got to be <laughs> we can, I cannot tell my mama what to do, okay? Ain't nobody tell their mama what to do. That was my thing with Neca. Say, what do you want her to do? Like, what I mean, I don't, I'm just saying, do I believe it? Yes. Do I understand why Wendy lied? Yes, that's her mama. I'm going to lie for my mama all day. My mama ain't do that. My mama ain't do that. As soon as I see it over, girl, you know what I'm going to do this shit, man. But I'm going to give that to her. No, she did it. Tori, Tori B, did she do it? That's not the point. <laughs> yes or no? That's the, that's the question. Yo. She probably cursed her holy fire and everything. <laughs> you don't okay? <laughs> you, is that your mama too? <laughs> but let me tell you one thing. I don't play about the mamas. Now, I ain't say nothing bad about Wendy Mama. I just said Wendy Mama did it. <laughs> I won't be reading Wendy Mama up here because I don't play about mamas. You know? We but don't. Do I wholeheartedly we believe black that. black mamas. Yes. Mm -hmm. All mamas, but black mamas especially. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I just I don't play about it. I don't play. And somebody is going to watch this and say, "Well, they're all mothers." I don't give a damn. They mamas not on the show. They on the show. So we talking about them. Yes, they are mothers, and we love that for them, you know. But we talking about they mamas. You know what I'm saying? Well, I ain't well going what, to could you really be mad as a mama, even the audience, as a mama? If somebody was messing with your children, you wouldn't curse them holy fire. I'm just saying. Levy say and Ivy fell children. out for a reason. And Mama Susan, pro Susan probably really cursed them people out. You're <laughs> absolutely right. She had every right to. That's her, that's her daughter. <laughs> but I don't know what you bringing it on the show. Like, what are you supposed to do something about it? <laughs> she was going to show how Wendy is not some innocent ass victim, Cynthia. I guess I don't even remember what the point of it was because I really think that Robin screwed the pooch. She had the A storyline this season, and I don't think that we were supposed to get Necca and uh, Wendy. Necca and Wendy to the degree that we got it. Yeah, they because they dragged it for like ten. It felt yeah, like ten episodes. I think because Robin refused to be transparent about her lifestyle. Like, what you want to do with Hope Hogan one like <laughs> shut up Hogan okay we just want to know why he cheating on you and why you allowing it that's all we want to know and then why you hiding it now go on and answer that for us 
Ho, and stop ho. doing the dance around. Just say, I stand by my man and shut the F up. I, like, honestly, it could have been dealt with. It could have been dealt with last season. It could have been dealt with last season. She could have. The thing about the luxury of knowing your tea and being able to spill your own tea so a girl can't beat you to it. You get what I'm saying? If right. she would have filmed first season, first episode last season, um, Juan, me and Juan went through an infidelity and it hurt me, but I love him and I trust him and I'm going to move forward with him because it's my man. And then at the end of the season, she got married. It would have wrapped itself up, right? But no, you say you're going to sit back and wait for Karen to do it. See, that's how you know they be wanting people to look back. That The level of plotterization in this Real Housewives of Potomac Dancery is team too much. Live in your authentic truth. The authentic truth is this man had you down to the bed last season six, depressed, couldn't get out of bed, couldn't fix the chair and nothing to eat, couldn't um, fill out a survey to pay your bills, couldn't um, help them get to school, couldn't do none of that stuff that you do on a regular, but couldn't have you go out there and put the satin line and in the hats, you see, right. you couldn't do none of that because people got that cheating on you. Or t um, TJ Maxx call about that. Maybe you'd have more money than you got right now. Because that's who would have felt bad for you. Somebody, not me, but yeah. somebody would have felt bad for you. But instead of you saying, this is why I can't get out of bed, it's because he's cheating on me, Giselle. If you sitting around here talking about um, it's unattractive for a woman to be in bed like that, I can't get out of bed because it hurts so much. Because I let this man back into my house, even after I heard him do that hot mic. I have spent my money on him. I have more than made him whole for the money that I lost. Do you get what I'm saying? I have more than made him. I have taken care of him. I have taken care of these children. And I am hurt. And I am depressed down to this house. And this man is going to sit in the, in, in, on the camera and say, this is unattractive when you do this. No, it's unattractive when you're doing that. And instead of her giving us the real, because I don't believe for the pandemic had you that depressed. Yes, I understand that depression is depression and I cannot control or dictate or really comment on what makes people depressed. Different things for different people, different shows for different folks. And it's very well that the pandemic had a lot of people depressed because of the results of the pandemic. The pandemic had people depressed because they couldn't be with their loved ones. Their loved ones were passing. They couldn't be in the emergency rooms with them. Um, they were losing their jobs and didn't have a way to work. You know what I mean? What you got in your cup? <laughs> Some truth serum. I'm getting hush. Let me get this out, okay? Because I'm sick of Robin and Dixon and I'm purging her out of my system because I wholeheartedly believe -la 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 -la. her ass won't be back next season. So let me get this out now so I won't ever have to. She not. Please don't. Yeah, but what I'm saying though is those are the effects of the pandemic, but it was depressing for you to get up every day and take your children to school and be the mother that you were to that degree to those children and to that man when you are on the show working and providing and putting food on the table and he's allegedly out there doing things with basketball teams he ain't got no business doing, allegedly in Canada doing stuff with people he ain't got no business doing, allegedly out there paying hotel bills he ain't got no business doing, and you mean to tell me that the pandemic is what had you depressed season six? I call bullshit. I really think what it is that got you depressed season six was you knew that man was cheating on you and you kept it from us. And now, you, because of that, the, the result of that, the domino effect of that is you're allegedly out of a job. Because you couldn't keep it real, and he refused to to take his lashes like a man, you know. Without there's no glory, without there's no guilt, no glory. So you can't do those things that you did and expect to keep a check. I'm sorry, you're not Giselle. Only person I know who can make a ham sandwich on TV and sit down and watch everybody else react is Giselle and get away with it. And you're not her, boo. So now there's a light skin privilege, right, that occurs in the colorism arisation of the black community, right? And mm -hmm. so yes, Robin and Giselle have benefited from colorism in a lot of these situations on this show because Rob, uh, Monique has been labeled aggressive, Candace has been labeled aggressive, um, Wendy has been labeled aggressive. Yeah, but Robin is aggressive. Hold on, but wait, I'm not getting into whether or not those three ladies are aggressive or not. Right. That's a conversation for a different day. But Robin is aggressive and has not been labeled as such, right? So that's the colorism part is a play, but what she also forgot about was pretty privilege. And I'm not saying that's that Robin is not an attractive thought. woman. <laughs> yep. She is an attractive woman to me. I think that she is pretty, but you know, you got pretty it's next to gorgeous, I guess, in Giselle. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, it's dark. Her soul is dark. Boom. But you get what I'm saying? But the, Giselle gonna went out every time, boo. So unfortunately for you, this is where you're at without a pinty or a pinto. So I don't know what she's going to do moving forward because I don't want to see her on anything. I don't want to see her on House of Villains. I don't want to see her on 
uh, Traders. I don't want to see her on Ultimate Girls Trip. I just don't want to see her, period. She should have been gone in my oh. estimation. Robin Dixon a long time ago. You know what was funny? Somebody brought up on Twitter. For those who don't believe that Giselle is a colorist or any of that, mm -hmm. we got to look to girl the ultimate girls trip when mm -hmm. Giselle said that, you know, her liquor was stolen, a Casa Azul bottle. She went on this whole, you know, thing about tirade about it was Candace and they want she wanted production to search Candace's um, belongings. Why? Well, why not search everybody's stuff? What this, did she this say was that everybody thing. could be searched? Or what? I think she asked everybody, and then everybody agreed except for Candace. I think that's what really happened. But you, she was wrong in that assumption anyway because bad weather stole it. <laughs> it was it was the white women who stole it, and <laughs> here you are, like you know, like come on, it just was. Come on, it, it's a lot of instances. Y'all not on Potomac, and you still like giving this girl hell. That's why she called you Janita man. <laughs> And you do a real one because we don't believe you and Jason is really together. Well, we know. Well, the theory is, I'm gonna open up the phone lines for that theory. But the theory is that he is actually Grace's boyfriend or something like that. What's that theory, Tori? Be that's going around with, about that? I ain't hear about that one. <laughs> he, no, he got a girl. He got a. He was with some other woman on February 14th, and he asked her about it on Watch What Happens Live. So it's, huh. you know, I don't know about Grace, but she, that wasn't Grace. He was with a whole nother woman on February 14th. So, you know, she said, oh, we can date other people. So why you call him your boyfriend? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Um, any other thoughts on the Potomac reunion before we move on? Because I, I just, I want y'all to understand, listen, I just, I'm I'm a person, right? I can hold my liquor. And what I say is, um, I just started sipping right now as we film this. So what I said and what I was doing, that was not liquor fueled. That was me just, you know, Tori B, I've been, how fast would I get? You be going off on your tangents. I, <laughs> but do I be right? I was teasing. Yeah, you was right. I yeah, bro, it's called connect. It's called, there's another thing about Robin. No, let <laughs> I can't with you. Anything else from the Potomac reunion? Oh, can we talk about this? And it was not on the docket, but why are we laying it for laying it to the girls? Wendy, let, come on, Wendy, with that hard hair. Come on. I don't like that hair. I don't like that hair, me, but come I on. Ain't like I don't like let it. I don't like the wet. I don't like the wet. I like it wet, but I don't like it wet and hard. I don't like it. I never yeah. like it. Okay, anyway, um, come on up here. I love the wet, though, but I just didn't like that particular version. And Wendy can Wendy normally get the hell right, so that was a that was odd for her. But come on up, except for season five. <laughs> now I got to say it. You know what I used to call her season five. Remember what I used to call her back in the day? What you call that? Man, I'm finna get so. We had no business saying that stuff in Clubhouse that we used to say. About Ooh, people. I'm glad. No, that stuff yeah. is recorded. It is recorded if you want to find it. But um, <laughs> man, I used to call her Jermaine Jackson. You was wrong. That was bad. I'm sorry, Wendy. But I still got to call you to the front. See how I own that and apologize? I need you to own something for me. Um, Wendy, please tell me, pray tell my sweet baby, why the hell you failed to um, incumbent upon you to put out there for the sake of Mia and her feelings and everything that G was going around telling everybody that the child was not his? She earned her seat for next year. I don't like that. I don't live. I don't give a damn. Wait, 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 wait. I don't like that. Oh, 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 no, no. Now I got, you know. This woman assaulted her last year. Don't nobody I don't give, give a, a damn. damn. She assaulted her. She assaulted. Let's break. Can you want to go there? He, she assaulted her last year. She Spill her goddamn assaulted. TV. Wait a minute. She verbally assaulted Mia from day one. She never liked Mia. Mia stepped into that house and said, oh, I've had my lips done, my boobs done, my eyes done, my ears done, my elbows done, my kneecaps done. I've had everything done. And Wendy did not like her. Is everybody forgetting that? 
Is everybody forgetting how Wendy laid and filleted um, so, Mia? Wait a minute, let me finish. She laid and filleted Mia out all season six, and then at the reunion, wouldn't even shut up. I'm not talking to you. Shut up. You're, you're, not, you're stupid. You're not doing all of that. So let me just say this. Because I know how people say, I can't believe you're going to advocate for violence. And violence is victory over violence. It's not right. Let me tell you something, okay? I'm going to just keep it 100 with you, right? Do I like that she did what she did in Miami? No, I don't like what my went, uh, uh, Mia did in Miami. Do I understand it? Excuse me. I don't give a damn what you say to her. You talking all that shit. Talking all what shit? Not you. I'm talking about the No, world. I know. Not me, but what shit you referring to? Wendy and Mia have been going back and forth for two years. And a lot of those times as they were going back and forth, Wendy was verbally assault, verbally wearing that lady ass out. She was letting her well, She it. had to fight her with her hands because she couldn't verbally go so, But back. I'm telling you, but then you have to realize who you're doing that with. Some people, I'm not saying that she had to. I'm not saying that she should. I get what you're saying. But she should be cognizant and aware that some people do not have a vernacular. Some people can't string a read together. Some people can do that, but they can only do it for so long before they want to fight. You have to be, oh, and I understand that this platform is not WWE Divas. So you should not, while you shouldn't expect to come into these situations with someone wanting to physically assault you. Just the realism in me is like, how far and how long do you think that's gonna go when with certain people? Everybody is not built the same. Okay. Candace can argue with you all. Yeah, I Candace understand. can argue with you all day. When uh, Mia cannot. You get what I'm saying? Either way, insinuating somebody has sex and that's <laughs> catch that tea. Wendy always spilling her tea. You forgot in that same scene, she said, you so, and your husband the one mess around, sleep around with everybody. So then, she clocked were you that really tea. surprised? I'm just saying. She uh, tell uh, more truth about Mia than Mia tell about Mia. But, but, but Tori B, if I'm doing all that truth telling about your business and you want to fight, I'm not going to be surprised. All right, I understand that. All right, that's all I'm it. saying. Two things can be true at one time, baby. Yes. Okay, that's I get it. And I'm not okay. ever, I hope nobody conflates that with me advocating for what she did. I'm just saying, don't be surprised. This is the reality outcome. of the situation. That's the, the reality mom can get of the you clocked. The same way all the people been saying Candace got clocked because of her mouth. That's what you're saying. <laughs> Hello. And I'm not advocating for that. I wasn't with that. The same people like said Monique. Kenya got clocked at the season six reunion she for her. She showed this. She, she kind of... But see? Started. See? That's when y'all slipped it. So, boom. Right down, Carolina. I got her down to the side. I got you, girl. I got you good. You don't put stuff in my face. Okay. Put that saber... That, what was Victory it? A saber? It violence. wasn't a saber. No fighting, please. No. Mm. The scepter. Mm. That's what it was. Yeah. You don't put no... I would, like, I would like for Portia to spell, spell scepter. <laughs> <laughs> Top tier. I'm sorry. Don't nobody do it like Kenya Moore do it. I don't know if Kenya Moore do it like that. Wait, do you like bought a part, Portia. Did you see the pose? <laughs> well, wait, before we move on, let's go ahead and talk about this and wrap the reunion on. And then we're going to okay. move on. But where did you land on her getting that out there? Did you think that that was right? Did you think that it was wrong? Like, did you think it was thirsty? I thought, in my opinion, it felt a little thirsty to me. It did. It felt like, let me save my seat, girl. They got me sit. They got everybody sitting where they want to sit this year. Let me go and do what I got to do. Absolutely. I, I don't like it, though. I think it's beneath Wendy. Abs but you know what? Like, I'm going to be real with you. Yeah, do so. This this season for her, mm -hmm. and she came and she gave us fashion and hair the last couple. Like, Wendy has stepped it up consistently, okay? When she came on, I, I never remember the years they come on. She came she on three years. The year of the fight. Uh, right. So three years ago, I'm correct, right? Yeah. She been on there three years. Giselle and, and Robin been on there since the beginning. And, and Ashley, I always forget about her that heifer. <laughs> and Wendy done came up and upgraded herself. Why y'all can't too. upgrade yourselves? Why y'all still look raggedy? But aside from that, I just have oh, to make that point. That's um, my thing is, is 
this whole thing with NECA, we don't know if they taped something else, but it seemed like their personal stories was rushed towards the end. And I feel like this NECA thing was, it obviously took way too much time. And it's just like, I feel like she like, I can't do anything but this NECA shit. That's all, that's all they put on her. So she like, I, you know, I didn't get a chance to be messy. Yeah, I read some heifers, but you know, so this was her time to shine. She got, she had the tea. Uh, she clocked um, me a tea more than me a clock her own tea. Okay, let her have it. This her little moment. I'm glad Wendy did it. Let me put this out here. But it's remember, I don't believe it's true because remember she said Jeremiah was an IUI baby when she was talking to NECA. So how does Ink think that? That's his baby if you was inseminated with sperm. So stop lying. You and G is lying. Y'all was lying maybe, about the uh, No, thing. maybe, maybe the baby, maybe the IUI was a lie. One of the two is a lie. She's still lying. <laughs> I like her. I don't care. No, all right. So what would you give? Wait, two things before we move, because we're gonna move on. First of all. Give me um one. So we're gonna say Candace is out next season. We're gonna say Robin is out next season. Ashley one more got to go. Who? Ashley Darby. So, so, so you would rather NECA and Giselle back over Ashley? Oh shit! It should yeah. be Ashley oh, and NECA. One. That's me. One. Give me one. Jesus I know. Christ. I know. It's tough. It's toughy. I. I. You know, Candace was on the bingo card. I know. So I thought it was going to be NECA and Ashley. Um, oh, who Hurry up. Come on, who man. Uh, I guess NECA. Sheesh. <laughs> you got to deal with another season of Ashley. And what would you rate uh, this season's first part of the reunion? One to ten. It was a doozy. I would give it a three. <laughs> okay. Um, everybody out there in the comments, uh, please go ahead and tell us what you rated the first part of the reunion. And you get one chop on the cast left. Who is that chop going to be? We're going to go ahead and check it that out. And uh, thank you guys for tuning in as you have been this evening. Are y'all drinking? What y'all thinking? Is you drinking? What you thinking? Hey, hey. That might be the theme song. Who is you drinking? What you thinking? Hey. 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 Um, you record that. Hey. Hey. <laughs> okay. Um, my one chop is going to have to go to... Ooh. I Giselle. Saw that. She gotta go, dog. I'm sorry. And don't try to sit and see what they try to do was sit Giselle next to Karen to humanize her, to blind us. But oh, we love it when Karen and Giselle are friends. I don't. Get rid of the hoe. Um, and I'll give it a five. I was increasingly frustrated watching this, so hopefully it's better. I'm gonna have um, to be drunk next weekend because this, mm -hmm. I mean, come on, this was bad. Amanda says she gives it a seven and Ashley could go. Saimara, I never feel like I'm pronouncing that right, um, but <laughs> our friend Saimara says that it is Ashley. Ashley who can go. And our friend Captain, every, every time I say Captain, you got to do this. So I know you don't know, so now you know. Our Captain, you're not doing it. Thank you. Our Captain. <laughs> I love torturing you. For creativity, Shantae says that it was a four and it was because of Robin, um, who, <laughs> and Samara gives it a six for Dragon, uh, Karen Dragon Robin. She definitely has, she drug her, oh my God. I just, why does Robin always go over there messing with that lady? Leave that lady alone. Turn her loose, Karen. Turn her loose, damn it. All right, you guys, we're going to move on. Thank y'all for rocking with us. We had to go ahead and get that out. I had to get my whole Robin. I'm on Robin Dixon. Yeah, you was on Robin for a minute. No, because I just wanted people to understand why I feel the way that I do. And I don't really get to talk about Potomac often. So, um, And we don't just... want to because you trash. <laughs> okay. Period. I just get straight to the point. <laughs> no chaser. <laughs> I'm gonna take as long as I want to. Notori. <laughs> <laughs> Notorious. Uh oh, look at that. Oh my god, they used to do that to me in high school. Ah! <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I got a question for y'all. Y'all ready? 
Who the hell is that? Porsche. She did something else to her nose. You do you got the before picture? I do not have Did they a see picture. how big I used to have it up on my profile, how big her, her original nose was. Oh child. Good for her though. You know what? I don't care what people do with their bodies. That's their choice. I don't mind it, but girl, she almost close to Michael Jackson nose. So then <laughs> from scale to one of one to me, where is she at with her nose? Why are you being shady? No, you said Michael Jackson. You gonna bring up? You gonna bring up the greatest? I'm bringing up Nene. And I love Mike Jack. Um, and I love Nene. She's about a six. If she do any more tweaks, she do any more tweaks. She ain't it looks like it's nose. settling in. That's what That's, I'm saying. She not gonna have a nose. She do it anymore. Well, not like caving in, like settling, like you know, the, the, it's it's like you know. Yeah, well, she keep messing with it. It's going to sink in. God, That's I wish it. I had a production assistant so we could play. How you like now, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> She's just going to have a point. Since we... <laughs> <laughs> Since we... <laughs> <laughs> okay, 6.5. I'll take that. Was that a 6.5? Y'all yeah, know I can't see. Oh, a 5. I'm sorry. Oh, hey, wah, wah, wah. Yeah, you definitely... Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> we we not up here now. Off camera, you can let me have it. You absolutely <laughs> right, Amanda. What did Amanda say? She says she needs to stop before she turns out like little Kim. Uh uh uh. Okay, we're gonna move on because I don't have that. <laughs> Amanda, I don't have no little Kim slander, Amanda. Uh Tori B I don't have no little Kim slander up here. Okay. I'm from New York. I don't give a damn. I love, I love Kim, Kim, but she needs to stop. <laughs> Please. Speaking of Atlanta, while we're over there, allegedly. Fallon, well, I don't know what her last name is anymore. Fallon, Pina. allegedly has who? Pina. Okay. <laughs> mm, good for you. Fallon <laughs> has an announcement to make, and the streets are saying that she's coming back to the Real Housewives of Atlanta. We do know that Fallon and Kenya have maintained a friendship. So my question is, if Fallon returns to the Real Housewives of Atlanta. It is definitely to do something with or against Portia. And if so, does that mean that Kenya and Portia are fighting again? I cannot take it. I don't want them to fight again, but this would be really good. Would it really? Yep, I'm with it. If y'all if y'all brought uh um Dr. Uh what's his name? Dr. Greg Dr. back on. Why you can't? I mean, listen, Simon ain't coming on. We know that for sure. You might as well get his ex-wife. Well, yeah, because Simon said a cease and desist, am I correct? So did, and, and <laughs> asked for the tapes from the uh from production and everything. If y'all filmed in his house. He's not going to get them. They're not going to give him them tapes. That's what he said. But that's what he, you can take what you want in one hand, but I'm going to tell you what brother going to do on the other. You're not getting them tapes, love, so you can let that go. So uh, you might as well bring her in. Let's get some more tea about Simon. And, and and Portia might as well do it. Let me tell you why she might as well do it. Why? That man is doing her dirty. What, what better is he doing way? To, you know, I officially unplugged, deleted, and I followed from that whole situation. I don't care. I just would rather watch it play out on television. I don't really care to report on it. I'm not interested in it in the slightest. <laughs> um, so I'll let you, Tori B, please give us the Portia and Simon update. I'm just saying, like, with all of the things that's happening. Oh, yeah, I was going to bring that up, too. Go ahead. So, apparently, Dennis and Portia have been hanging out a lot with PJ, as they should. They should have a great co-parenting relationship. But the audience has been messy and in saying, um, hey, Simon, um, Portia's been out with Dennis more often. And he said, this was his response. I'm, I'm happy for PJ. So. Um, That's a shady bitch there. Go ahead with your report. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so what do we think? I mean, I heard him say he need a boy now. I don't know if that was in reference to Portia. But, I mean, is she rekindling something with Dennis? Mm. I mean, the way that... Um, 
that uh what's her show how that ended was crazy and she didn't want nothing to do with him so i don't know uh, but they but take a lot show? more photos together i'll tell you that oh it's it was something. called it was called portia pushes dennis mama off a cliff in mexico <laughs> <laughs> why are oh, you no, so that's nice. not what it was called it was called everybody hates portia <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because after that she made it made herself so unlikable. That's another reason why she had to take a hiatus. I ha I venture to say that she has always been that unlikable. Y'all just hated Kenya more to pay to pay attention. You know why? Cause she fun. I don't give a damn. <laughs> Y'all she has always been what she was on that show. You not happy for her to come back? Yeah, I was the advocate. I felt like she should have been cast back. I think that, yes, I, I was the advocate for her. Um, unfortunately, everything is online and there's a digital footprint. So I did advocate for Portia to come back. I think that she should come back. I think that she has an element of fun. I think that she is the spunk that Nini was. And I have a reason why I feel that way. I won't go into all of that. Because y'all really try to run me up off my own damn show. If I told you why I felt that way. But... I felt like Nini and Portia going, you can't have that. And if we can't have Nini back, bring us Portia back, is what I thought. Yeah. All right. I get that. Yeah. That's what but I thought. Even though, proud. you know, some people say Portia has morphed into Nini Jr. in China, and that's where her personality comes from. <laughs> she might have, child. I don't She's know the if that's Queen true. B now. She's what? She's going to be the Queen B on the show. And I thought that I, it's, you know, it's so crazy. I called that back when I saw article next. Remind me to bring that article that I wrote um, to the next um, happy hour, right? So I wrote an article years ago asking who was going to be the new Supreme um, as season eight was the beginning to film because um, Nini had quit before season eight or, you know, left the show at a full time capacity. Mm -hmm. And, um, my answer, especially deeply rooted in that era of Housewives, shot a lot of people, and people thought I was going to choose Kenya, and I chose Portia. So even way back when I am, y'all, you know, you know about me. Whether I like a, a, a housewife or a reality television so, show personality or anyone in general, I might not like you, right? But, but I'm gonna give you your G's, and you know that to be true, right, Torby? Yeah, that's fine. I'm gonna give you your G's now, and I think that you can't rebuilt this without having her at the helm of it um i really wish that candy would have been there this season uh but okay because i think that candy is the actual bridge between between kenya and portia right mm -hmm. um then shamia will now fill that role but if shamia is not a full-time housewife it won't make sense for her to be the bridge as the front of the show because that's do you get what i'm saying yeah i get it yeah so, I always thought that Portia should be there. Hey, Mel. Hey, Sean. Hey, again, Amanda. Hey, again, Simara. Hey, again, Shantae. Hey, again, Asia. Hey, again, Clement. Hey, to the people. Hey, to the people out there. Oh, Lord Jesus, we rock it, y'all. Y'all got them in the room today on YouTube and on uh, Twitter. Thank y'all for y'all support. Thank y'all for tuning in and watching us on uh, Monday night for Summer House. We had a great time. And... I want you to stay tuned because we are going to be doing bold and bougie seven and eight wrapping it up so stay tuned we're going to be giving that me and jasmine and then we're going to be on to the next show so let us know what shows that you want us to do obviously it wasn't buying beverly hills because you guys didn't respond to it so we won't be doing that but um i heard vanderpump villa is good right now people are loving that i refuse to do vanderpump rules i'm a, i'm sorry i don't I'm sorry. like vanderpump I refuse to do um, the Valley. I'm sorry. As long as they have people there who um, were alleged and there are documented reported cases of racism and mm -hmm. homophobia, I won't be doing it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So they are out of it. They're out of it. Um, but anything else, let me know. I, somebody recommended The Circle. So I got to see what The Circle is on Netflix and check that out. I don't mind doing that. Um, but yeah, so let's go ahead. and uh, What are people saying? Love people. and marriage, Huntsville people. <laughs> Love and Marriage Husband is definitely going to be They are filming right, right now Melody okay. was in her confessional So it's coming It probably won't be back till maybe September I guess If but. we were to get a Love and Marriage Huntsville panel together But I wasn't hosting it Someone else is hosting it Is that okay with you guys? Let me know yes or no in the comments
Okay. While we're getting that together, um, <laughs> somebody agreed with you. Chase. Said what? Um, um, I can't say her name right. Oh no, it's Captain. Yes. Um, <laughs> love and marriage Huntville stands are too rapid for me. I'm telling you. I am telling you. Oh, somebody once said SWV and Escape. Okay. I'm well, I did do. I hosted loving. I see that loving, but uh, I hosted <laughs> SWV and Escape's first season on the lean, and so I don't mind going back and revisiting that. I think that loving, not loving. I think SWV and Escape. I it would be crazy to me for them to go on this tour and not document it. So that's why right. I'm at this. So I feel about it. All right, you guys. Let's go ahead and talk about. Oh, I. Ugh. I was so disgusted. Who made me watch that interview? I think it was you. Yeah, I did. <sighs> Blame Tori B for what we about to get, right? Because Tori B made me watch uh, the interview that Carlos King, um, friend to the show, hey, Carlos, catch. No, I'm joking. Um, Carlos King conducted with Fire Marie Wiley. <laughs> I hate that lady. Fire. Fire Marie. I don't like that blonde on her. Anyway, I think you look better with darker hair. That's just me. Um, so we're going to go ahead and go into just one of the clips that we were able to procure from Fire Marie's interview with <laughs> Carl. I hate that lady. Uh, oh. With Carlos King. And we're going uh, to open the phone lines because some people got some. Um... You guys are going to open the phone lines. The yeah. phones are going to be open. Okay. We're going to definitely open the phone. Let me go ahead and play the clip. And you know what I'll go ahead and do? If you've watched Fire Marie's interview, call and talk to us about it, okay? Yes. All right, so let's play the clip and then I'll go ahead and drop the number in the link. Hit me at the, in the message after the beat. Let me go ahead and try to figure out how to get this comment up out here. Y'all know I need a production assistant. If you would love to work for No Chaser TV, we're a great establishment to work for. You're not gonna get paid yet, but we're gonna pay you in laughs and love. <laughs> All right, here we go, you guys. When you came on the show, do you think Garcelle wanted to be the only black woman on Beverly Hills Housewives? I did get that feeling. I think that she's been able to get away with unnecessarily playing the race card so many times unchallenged because who can challenge her, right? The, the other ladies can't challenge her. So I think that's been her play for so long. So... When you came on the show, do you think Garcelle wanted to be the only black woman on Beverly Hills Housewives? I did get that feeling. I think that she's been able to get away with unnecessarily playing the race card so many times unchallenged because who can challenge her, right? The, the other ladies can't challenge her. So I think that's been her play for so long. <sighs> so I'm not going to lie to you. You on mute. <laughs> you still on mute. <laughs> How about now? You're good. I'm glad I'm all, I was on mute because the way I was over here cussing. You was cussing? I don't like that lady. <laughs> and if you watch us over on the lean, uh, the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills review, I let her have it. And because this is no chaser TV, tomorrow makes one month that the channel has been officially open. One month, ooh, 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 one month, mm, 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 mm. one month, one month, one month, go ahead, one month. We've been open for a month, and uh, hey, Wellington. Hey, Wellington, I'm going to read her for the old and the new. For everybody who is new to this, I'm going to show you I'm true to this. Let me get your ass together, um, Dull Marie. You have the nerve and the unmitigated gall to say that Garcelle wants to be the only black woman on that show because she sat back and watched fan reaction to you after the season aired. You have the unmitigated gall to say that uh, Garcelle panders to the fans and she plays the race card. Let me get you together, bitch. And I'm so sorry to be talking to a woman like this, but I got to talk to somebody the way that I feel like they were going to understand what I'm about to say to you. 
you are out of bounds or you are out of pocket. And in my opinion, the reason why you are so is because you do not understand the Black American experience. And so while you um, were born in Canada and raised in Canada and then migrated to the United States years ago, I don't think that you truly fully understand the nuance in between the two. And that's not to say that racism does not exist worldwide because it does. Mm -hmm. But there is a difference in the Black American experience. So when you get on your high horse and you sit on the reunion stage and you say, I don't think that Dorit was being racist when she absolutely has been racist. You want to know why Dorit has been racist? Let me break it down for you. Because we've seen since season 10, Dorit has found a new way to introduce a microaggression in relation to Garcelle onto this show. Am I right or am I wrong? Amen, hallelujah, you have. So if you continue to build a mountain of racist uh, microaggressions at the top of that mountain is going to be racism darling you cannot continue to exhibit a pattern for it not to be that if you weren't racist then you wouldn't continue to be microaggressive am i correct you wouldn't continue to live in your bubble so for you to fix your lips to say that she plays the race card when this the card that has been dealt consistently over and over again because someone does not agree that someone was being racist to you does not make it right that's not conflate the two issues. She absolutely was being microaggressive and racist to Garcelle. In my opinion, having watched it, everybody calls me Chase Luther King. I have no reason to lie for Sutton. Yes, I am a slutton. Okay, I love Sutton. I love Big Sut. I big love her. Sut. You been but calling if Big Sut is racist? <laughs> big Sut gonna be a racist. And what she said to you was not racist. Was it condescending? Yes. Was it patronizing? Yes. Was it a little nasty? Yeah. It was. It was deep. All of the it, above. it was all of that. But you were yelling at her. So when a woman tells you not to yell at her, when you're yelling at her, just because she tells you not to yell at her, that is not what makes her a racist. Okay? So for you to be mad that you tried to play the race card and it was what? Reversed, Uno reversed and sent back to you. Don't get mad at her for that. Right. You, I think that, I, and I'm going to say, I love Carlos, y'all. I do. I love Carlos. But what I think he tried to do in this interview, and it did not work, it only made me hate her more, was I think he tried to sprinkle his Carlos dust on her. Y'all, I like her. Let's give her a chance. Let right. me go ahead and ask the questions in a way that will make her come out of this. Because I if agree. I'm being, I'm going to be fair to her. Mm -hmm. Do I think that she got a fair shake on this show? No. I think that the way that she was edited into the show is congruent or cohesive with being a friend of the show and not, and not, and not a main a housewife. Cast member. Yeah, I agree. So they didn't have to give her that 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 main housewife bump. If she would have came in being a friend of the show, then next season they probably would have ended up bumping her up full time. You know what I mean? Um, but I think that what it was in an effort to do was to try to humanize her and get us to see it. And in my opinion, I watched it against my will. I am open-minded. As I mentioned earlier in the show, if I don't like you, that's one thing, but I'm going to give you what you're due. I do think that the edit was horrible for her. I think that you should have showed everything and let us make up our minds and our decisions on our own instead of making it up for us. But honestly, at this point, I don't really care. You're fired. Never to return again, boo. Tori B, take it. Kick it. So, I'm going to open eyes. so when you were specifically talking about the Black American experience, right? Mm -hmm. What I'm going to go over is I did we did learn that about her in this interview we she was adopted by um, an Asian family she says she knows that her mom was Dutch and her dad was Nigerian, Nigerian. yeah and so that made me look at her a little bit differently like no wonder she acts like this no wonder now she that doesn't relate it makes more sense to me. She, you know, she grew up in Vancouver. She said there were no black families until a couple of years, until she was like 13. And then her mom met somebody who was black who actually braided her hair for her. And they lived an hour away and all of that. That humanized her just a little bit for me. Where I have the issue, and this makes perfect sense why she is on this you know, like take Giselle down bullshit. Oh, I'm sorry, Tori B. Let me just cook. I mean, not you're Giselle. absolutely correct. She didn't call a racist idea. Now go ahead, Tori B. Next. Right. Like, 
she that's what I think that's what I think she is I don't know right. her to be that because I don't know her but everything that she's shown us at least to that in my opinion Go she ahead, definitely threw Garcelle under the bus and more than once yeah and it was just like but why I mean I'll give I'll give her I'll play the devil devil's advocate she did mention she realizes that Kyle used her right she said, because who started this whole esophagus conversation? Kyle did. Okay, and you fell for it. You took the bait. You took the bait. The problem I have with Anna Marie, and I'm going to give you, you know, I'm going to give you what your name is, you know, how it's supposed to be said, is that you have not taken any accountab accountability and you doubled down on the bullshit. And then you're going to throw the other black the only other black housewife under the bus to make you feel better and prop yourself up that's bullshit okay it's bullshit for you to say and carlos i love you baby and your your interview style is to you know give who you interview to, to on a little, and give a a little yeah open them up and pat them yeah. on the head and all that and i'm okay child. with that i'm okay with that and and that's fine right this is how we got as much information as we did. Right. But when you asked her, do you believe Garcelle wanted to be the only black woman on the cast? Mm. I didn't like that. And I'm going to tell you why. There's why? evidence to prove otherwise. She brought Cherie on. That's her name? Cherie? Cherie. It's so not it, Cherie. what's uh, Cherie's name in Atlanta? Cherie? No, no. Garcelle no, 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 brought no, on. Well, this is how I tell them apart. So oh. it's Cherie in Atlanta, right? Uh-huh. So she's Cherie. Cherie, okay. Yes, that's how I told her. Yeah. Cherie Zampino, which is mm -hmm. Will Smith's ex-wife, on the show. It was last season or the season before? Um, both, actually. She filmed a scene with her. Okay. Season 10, and then they wanted her back. You know, fans have been asking for her right. to come and do it, so they filmed her season 12. Yes. Right. So... She filmed, season, she filmed a scene in 10 and 11, and then she was... She joined as a friend in 12. Okay. Yeah. So, Mr. Carlos, who is Carlos King. The King. You know, you know that. You know Sh uh, Cherie was on there. And um, Garcelle was the one who introduced her to the group. So why would you ask her that? And she jumped right on there and said, absolutely, that is my experience. I, and I'm going to say think... this too, Anna Marie. Well, I think it was done in an effort to, to you know, make her likable. But I'm sorry, there's going to be no, all attempts are going to be futile because there's nothing about her that is likable. I think her story is relatable. I think it's admirable. Um, you know, her her family life and background is interesting. And that is where it ends and begins. Everything else about Anna Marie, Anna Marie, whatever her name, sleep study, everything about sleep study, everything about um, sleep apnea, everything about um, sleep number has been a chop. Everything. And we are not even touching the tip of the iceberg. Um, I'm going to say this one point and we can leave it alone. No, we got something else to get into about it. But go oh, ahead. Um, you can say your point, please. My thing is, <laughs> <laughs> girl, it was not Garcelle's job to speak up for you and how you felt. She didn't ask you to speak up for her. I mean, did she speak up for Garcelle in the moment? She said she agreed that certain things were not right or they weren't nice. But the, the thing is, is it's not her job. Garcelle being the only black woman in the group, who's going to speak up for her? Who's going to like the only one that might speak up or say, yeah, that was kind of nasty is Crystal. But here's what, though, right? They say that there are instances where um, Sutton has spoken up for her. It just doesn't make air. Right. We don't know that, right? So we, I'll say I mean, that. But yeah. Garcelle is not responsible for how you feel or knows how you feel unless you tell her. So why would she speak up for you in that moment? She's like, yeah, I feel that playing a race car shit, that's shit white people say. And I don't like that either. I, I hate that. You know, this whole DEI plan, the race car conversation. Um, I, I hate that. I think that that's a cop-out 
to evade accountability for what you're doing and saying. And if you are truly wanting to learn, darling, and I need to learn and teach me and all this stuff that I shouldn't have to do and I shouldn't be charged with doing, you should just be a decent human being. And you wouldn't ask me something that you wouldn't want nobody asking you or talking to me in any kind of way you wouldn't want nobody talking to you, right? Um, then why don't you go and do the learning yourself? Yeah, I, when she said, you know, when she came to U.S., she felt like she wasn't white enough for the white girls and black enough for the black girls. And I okay, feel like, I give her that. but I feel like that plays into this. So I think you need therapy, girl. Yeah, she needs therapy. And she needs, you know, um, you and your husband. And yeah, he, because he pissed me off tweeting what? about Garcelle. That wasn't cute either. <laughs> what are you drinking? Whoa. No, I just, it's just like you're, you're black people, you coming online, just being nasty to her. Like, that's a single woman. You're a man. Your wife can fight her own battles. If she has something to say about Garcelle, let her say it and not get Twitter fingers and go off beefing with a woman. It's disgusting. Especially since he is, you know, he has such um, staunch outlooks on trans women and trans people. Um, and he feels that, you know, women should be whatever he feels. The fact that she would willingly strike up an argument with a woman, it's a bit sus. You know, um, and as far as the transphobic conversation goes, that conversation in and of itself was transphobic. I am not going to give her the satisfaction of dignifying her outlook as well as her husband's um, outlook because there are tweets that are online that you guys can find. I, I brought them to the show tonight. I'm not putting them up. I'm not going to dignify that with airtime, right? Um, we already not making no money, so why would I continue to waste precious free airtime when we're trying to make a little coin eventually? Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, and uh, I wanted to say that, yes, I have been corrected throughout the comments. Garcelle did not call her racist, her being Dorit. I did. <laughs> I feel, in my opinion, that the behavior is racist. For somebody so cultured. With that accent and you from Connecticut, oh. oh. With, that be with that being said, let's go ahead and open up the phone lines, you guys. Thank y'all for rocking with us. I don't even know how long we've been. Oh, okay. All right. This is about right. So thank y'all for <laughs> rocking with us. Um, whew, shout out to where be the people that got me. Hot today, and I really was gonna lay into them, but they're not worth it. Uh, you know, she made some comments about Crystal, and I gotta say, now you're not gonna like this. Remember, I said I give people what they do. In the words of Doctor Heavily, I believe her. I I kind of do believe something. Some I believe the Crystal thing. comments. I just I'm gonna be real with you because she lied and tr and tried to say Crystal was the one who said the ED thing. To me, she's just a you know, Anna Marie is a liar. Um, but I do believe some of that stuff. Oh, did you hear the tea about the friends and why they really stopped talking to her? That's yeah, that's been out forever that um she told her people not to apply for the show and then she got it. Yeah, I didn't know that. Oh, that's been out forever. Yeah, she's a whole human being. We're gonna open up the okay, the phone line buzzing. All right, all right, all right. All right, talk to us. Who we got? Hey got Mel, thank you for bed. calling in. Is he up there? Hello. Oh, you gotta move sorry, man. Let me move the picture. I'm sorry. Let me move the picture. <laughs> How you doing? Oh, I think somebody's on mute. I you no. can't hear me. Hello. Mm. I'm He's back there. Here. I'm back here. Mel, can you hear us? Hello, I you can hear me. Yeah, yes. we can hear you. Yeah, I can't I can't hear neither one of you. Everything is on mute. Huh. Okay, I'm gonna drop you down and bring you back up, okay? Oh wait a minute, let me see. Mel, you there? Yeah, you can hear me now? 
We can hear you the whole time. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't hear you. I can't hear okay, you. Okay, well, good. We got it fixed. What's going oh, on? Oh, no, no, no. Well, you know what? Listen, congratulations on your channel. Thank you. I've been watching. I even put it on my community wall just now. I was like, okay, this is what we need right now. We need this conversation about Potomac. And I want to say, Miss Tori, I'm loving you too. I love the energy. I watch the replay. So, <laughs> you know what? I want to say first about Anne Marie. See, for me, I think Anne Marie. You know, I'm thinking, Anne Marie, listen, uh, with you there on that show, Garcelle was still the only black woman on the end of Beverly Hills, to be quite frank with you. Even with you sitting there, you were just a token. I'm so, I'm so, I'm, uh, it's crazy to me why C Candace Owens, Stacey Dash, and Anna Marie want to play the role of the token. It, it just makes no sense, but this is what they do. Like, yeah, for me, I would love to tell Anna Marie and Candace Owens to get, get out of drag, get out the diamonds, go down to a a Ku Klux Klan meeting on to, to the Trump rally and see how you get treated with the camera. That's what I want to tell them. So I'm going to leave it right there with them because I don't want, listen, it's all alleged. I don't want Mr. Chase to get no problems. The, the girls in Beverly Hills don't like me and Chase know they that. They don't so like you. They don't like me. They don't like me. And I, and I don't care about that. It's okay. But um, so now I want to go to. Giselle. It's okay. I like you. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Listen, you know, I've been unleashed. You know what? You know, and Tori, you know, it's raining in New York City, so it's cold. And I'm monsoon. I'm, and listen, I, I'm already in the mood. So I said, I'm glad Chase is on. But I want to say about uh, Potomac because I didn't get a chance to. So and I, I don't use this language and Chase. No, I don't really use this language. But you see, if Giselle would have laughed at me the way <laughs> she did with Candace, I would have said, oh, you laughing at somebody, you laughing at somebody crying. Well, listen, uh, listen, I'd rather be a bitch that can cry than a bold bitch that can't. That's what I would have told Giselle in that moment. Okay. I would have definitely gave, get, talked about her water retention and her need oh. water pills and everything else. I, I would not sat there and been crying in front of that that damn demon. Now, I'm mad with Nicki Minaj for pitting them on, on her on her Instagram, but I unfollowed her when I saw her put the mean girls there. So, you know, listen, you, I'm on this channel, so it's, you know, I can be a little looser here. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so I definitely would have said, yeah, I, you know, at least I can cry. And I also think with Giselle, she invokes her daughters too much for me. For so many years, she always invoked, and my daughters is hurt. Well, listen, ma'am, your daughters wasn't hurt by all those fake picnics you had with those those guys who didn't like you, who didn't respect you, who left you at the drop of a hat, who had these fake relationships with you. They were more traumatized by your men and all the scandals you had with them than they were by these arguments with these women that you started with. So I'm so I'm so sick of Giselle using her daughters saying that they was hurt by something. She know damn well they weren't hurt by nothing. They probably hurt by her behavior and her and all the stuff that she got going on. So um, yeah, that that um, that that reunion was a hot mess. And I'm and I, I love Candace as a character. I don't know her, and I, I I actually got to YouTube with this name because of Candace. I didn't like the fight, so then I came up here just to disrupt a little bit to get into these different chats with people. <laughs> I did. I shown up there because, you know, I went to places where they didn't like Candace and I was there, you know, taking 10 at a time. I, you know, that's what I was doing. <laughs> I, you know, that was before I got up on here and try to be classy about everything. But, know, um, right. <laughs> you know, that's what it was. But you know what, Tori, you said, you said, not, you said a lot of things, but this thing that you said, I, I wanted to say now, I, this is all legit because again, I'm going to say legit, but okay, it's, well, okay this is a little, little tea. So on Giselle's Instagram, there's a guy named Patrick McDon Patrick McDonald. Okay, he's a pro he's a producer. Now, back in the day, and I, I don't know him personally, but we all knew of Mr. Patrick because he was a very messy, hot mess party boy bottom out here in New York City. Everybody knew who this man was, and this is all legit. He was a hot mess. So now he now mind you, when he went over to Logo and Chase, you may notice he was on Fire Island. Okay, he's okay, on Fire, yeah. he's on Fire Island. Yes. Yeah, he I won't go into detail. He detailed his his habits and his health condition. That show was ran by Kelly Ripper, who was a best friend of Andy Cohen. So my conclusion is I'm so sick and tired, allegedly, of Andy Cohen getting some of his sugar, sugar babies or party boys, whatever it is, to run these shows. These guys can't even run a damn pamphlet at the local takeout store. They can't run these shows. Patrick was a mess. He was a hot mess. So why is he running a show? Now we're talking about missing out on details, I mean, maybe that, maybe alleged, alleged, maybe Patrick still had a memory loss from all his partying days. So maybe he Ooh. can't keep up with all the receipts that he needs to have. You know what, you see, Chase, I'm having a good time with you over here. Cause listen, I don't have, I don't gotta be so censored, you know, I don't have, okay. to, I don't have to censor myself. So, and this is all legit, because, you know, like I said, I, my mouth runs a little fast and the people get mad about things. So I, no, I, you, you know. got it, you fine with us. Go ahead, you better talk, yeah. talk, talk. So that's what I think. I think that the, the production has gone down 
Now, after we lo lost people like Paulos King, you know, he, he I think for me, he gives too, fl too many flowers in his interviews. I think Mariah Huck kind of clocked him in one of her interviews with him and said, listen, you, you say everybody's a queen. Everybody, he does that too much. I don't see why he was even have, making time for Anna Marie. She just was giving me sour apples, sour oranges, sour, sour, you know, just a right sour, time, sour milk. Yes. So, um, yeah, I didn't understand that. But, yeah, the production is going down because allegedly Andy is up here in New York City just taking all these damn party boys, retired addicts and whatever else going on alleged. And he's putting them in power, in, in um, positions of power. It's not because you go to her Instagram. It's right there. She says, this is my producer. I, I'm not speak. People knew who Patrick was before he was on TV. It's just, you know, in New York City, it's a very small little community. Here, so we all kind of know each other in that way. But, um, yeah, I think it's all a hot mess. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm. I'm just sad that Candace didn't, she was crying and I'm also sad she didn't read. And I also think with Candace, my problem with her is that she's she's an emotional reader. I need her to be a little more like Nene where she can be playful with it. I, don't don't be too hurt by everything because at the end of the day, you're not gonna know these ladies in 10 years, you know? Yeah. I think she's tired and she's drained of fighting though. She's been fighting for yeah, two she years. Like she was it's tired. a lie, it's a lie. She said her husband lost jobs over this. And Giselle's just very flippant. I didn't say this. Yes, you did. You insinuated. Uh -huh. And words you know, matter. You, know you know how bad it has to be when a white man can't get a job? Okay. Come on now. In America? Listen. All right. Mel, <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Baby, man, I can't look at a T. Still that T, Mel. I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna do it every single time. Listen, I know yeah, that's right. I, I, that's what I was saying. I said, oh, I wrote you in the. Car. I said, oh, you had. Why well, you had this live stream? I'm on the train, getting down, getting my, you know, <laughs> thing. So I'm like, no, I'm gonna be here. I'm going to be here, but even if I'm not eating yet. I'm, you know, not defrosted yet. I'm still cold and all this kind of stuff. But I'm gonna get on this over here on this line to give my information or give my point of view because, yeah, that th this reunion was a hot mess and. um you know it is what it is, but that's well. That's all I got to say about that. And I hope that you have a good night. Thank you, Mel. Mel. Thank you. Story B, we got one more call, and then we're on our way on out of here. Um, and everything on this channel is alleged. We don't know what the hell. We just making conversation. We know what the hell. We don't know. Um, it's just alleged. How about that? We just gonna deal with that. <laughs> and coming up, Charlotte's a reunion. Hey, Hi. Wellington, the the editor chief. CEO Fonza, the man who writes my checks from the reality rundown himself, Wellington Gomez. You know. Uh, <laughs> hey. Hi, Tony. This is the Clubhouse reunion. <laughs> I know. I am so. This is really why I, I called in because I saw Tori was on and I said, like, you know what? Let me hop on real quick. <laughs> Girl, you, you got, got, the, you got, you got the queen the spilling the tea, honey, on here. Baby, man, I was feeling tea. <laughs> Thank you, Amanda. Amanda said, get your allegedly bar up, baby. I got it up. Thank you, Amanda. Amanda loves me, and I love her. Honey, I was backstage. I was backstage on No Chaser TV Studios, and I was like, what is going on? <laughs> Lord Jesus. Listen, <laughs> listen, I don't know what was going on, but Mel definitely filled us in on some missing context, so we appreciate that. Now, Wellington, you getting up here? Don't piss me off like you used to back in the day. <laughs> what, 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 what are we talking got? about? What are we talking about? Let me know. What, what, um, what's on so the we were given our opinion download on the Real Housewives of Potomac reunion, and we also um, talked about Doug Marie's interview with Carlos the King, darling, amongst other things. Um, where did you land on the reunion in relation to Candace and the Green Eyed Bandits? I think that's the most important thing that we want to know. He's tired of talking about Anna Marie. <laughs> Oh, well, I can not take <laughs> fire Marie for one more second, child. I don't want to talk about her. Listen, I think that when talking about housewives, you always have to be current. So the, the current thing is that Candace is not coming back to the show. You know, she right. made the decision to walk away. So I feel like seeing when the news came out of her not coming back to the show right before the reunion starts to play kind of gives me the the feeling that this was a decision that she made a long time ago um and that she kind of knew that she probably wanted to take a step back um when coming back to next season and i think that that's the energy that she has at the reunion like i feel like she literally at the reunion she's like i'm just trying to like get through this um because i'm not even sure if i want to come back to this like, environment again because 
Season 8 was a lot. I think Season 8 was a lot for everybody, the fans, but also the cast, because they lived it while filming it, and, they, and I feel like a lot of them knew that it was going to get this reception. And now that it did, it's been a lot for the cast itself, because also we have to think about, like, they're filming the show for us. When the fans don't like it, you can only imagine how these women feel, right? right. So it's been a lot. It's been a lot, and I think that it shows that she's not coming back. So I just wish Candace everything. She's a friend of the reality rundown. We love her down. So I wish her all the best. Um, and I hope that this year of Housewives bring her even more success. That's why I love her seeing different rooms that are not necessarily like, you know, reality TV rooms. So I hope that her music career goes somewhere, and I hope that she keeps doing it, honey. Uh, read that comment for me, Tori B. Out loud, please. Don't blame Giselle for Chris not having a job. Chris hasn't been able to keep a job since day one. So I have something to say about that. Well, I'm sorry. I have, listen, chefs are different. They're not like regular people. Their industry changes. Um, I could, I know this from personal experience. They okay. change jobs pretty often. What, Maybe, what's your personal experience? Don't do her. Tell us. Don't do her. <laughs> anyway, um, they take multiple jobs in different contracts. That's how it works. Right. So that's how chef life is. That's why he does content in between. You know, mm -hmm. that's just what it is. Um, so, and I've said it on Twitter too. So we're not going to shame chefs. Their business changes. Right. Restaurants close down. Things happen. But I do think being accused of having sexually assaulted a woman does play into whether or not you can get hired, right? right? There's patrons that come into establishments and they don't want a chef, you know, sexually assaulting women. So that does play a part. So that's- I, I agree with you, Tori. I think that people need to stop playing down Chris, acting like he hasn't never had a job. Like, do you really think that Candace was gonna be with a scrub that really wasn't paying no bills whatsoever? And hearing Dorothy's mouth in the back the whole time, like no. let's be for real, like let's be for real, like Chris, they own they um he he was he was doing his little restaurant stuff. COVID happened. He's trying to stay afloat, like many chefs. You know, a lot of chefs went through that. Um, and I think that Chris has been a hustler. Like that's that's the type that's the type of vibe that Chris gives me. You know, like. He get to he get to a coin. Whatever that coin is, he get to a coin. Is it a consistent coin? Is it a coin that we see like, you know, he's been doing this for years? Maybe not, but it's a coin. Right. And I see I Katie's know. comment. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna get in her business. I'm gonna get in your business too, Katie. When I get up off of here, um, <laughs> no, but um, I don't really have anything to say. I wish them the best. You know, I have not always been. Oh, the and, um, about about Anna Marie. Um, oh, I think she's tired, really? and I think that... You think um, she's a liar? Her, no, I say I think she's tired. Oh, tired. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I think she's tired, and I think that her going on this um, tour of trying to somehow, like, prove that she was a good character, the serving of another season, is weird to me, because at the end of the day, if we're not going to talk about it all, then you can't come back next season. And if we're not going to talk about the rape allegations, and if we're not going to talk about... I'm so sorry, Wellington. I don't know what the hell is happening. Lord Jesus, it's a fire. Oh, Lord! <laughs> My mentor, he don't know I just said that. I won't say it again ever again, but ooh. <laughs> I love you, Chase. I love hey, you too. That is the big reason. Hey! Oh my this is a pioneer, a four found a, a, a founding someone father, called, darling. Someone call Ricky on the phone, please. <laughs> I love y'all. I love y'all. I love y'all. How you doing, ma'am? I don't want to be rude. I'm sorry. Uh, nice, nice to, to meet you. You. <laughs> you guys have never been in the same clubhouse room together? I left very early on, you know. I was yeah. um done when Monique was done season five. We were out of there, okay? <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. See, he platformed me. One of the people platformed me and gave me the courage to be up here today is Thomas J. And he is just Oh, you yeah, remember so Thomas? Huh? I do remember Thomas. I was like, I just, that's so, 
But um, I was in the room the when you was running the room. Yes. Yeah, okay. Thomas yes. Ran yes. The room. Yes. So Thomas, Tori, um, Wellington, you guys, we're gonna go just a little bit longer today because I want you guys to just watch this, right? Because this was Clubhouse, and so a lot of you guys met me in this platform through the Lean and YouTube, which I'm forever grateful for. But if there was no Clubhouse and these people that I'm up here with now, there would be no me on the Lean. So. I'm going to let them talk and talk about whatever y'all want to talk about, child. What y'all got to say? Listen, I saw you put the link in the chat. I said, let me, I got some time. I'm in Atlanta, Hartsfield <laughs> Airport right now. Oh! Um, so, yeah, I'm I'm going to North Carolina tomorrow for Dreamwork Festival. But I was, you know, let me check in and see what's going on. Um, thoughts on the reunion. You guys were talking and touching on um, Candace and Chris. But then I also heard Anna Marie. So I want to start with Anna Marie comment because I thought it was extremely lame for her, one, to say what she said about Garcelle, um, not even just on the reunion when she tried to make it seem as if Garcelle didn't stand up for her against Sutton. Well, you're your own black woman. Stand up for yourself. That's okay, what that's what Garcelle has had to do before another black woman joined the platform. She was standing up for herself, i.e. Kyle. I, when she talked about Kyle saying that, hey, you wouldn't, um, you didn't pay the donation for the uh, the charity event. And she would have never did that to Dorit or to Eric or anything like that. And Garcelle stood 10 toes down behind that. So for Anna Marie to try to use or to say, to say that Garcelle was playing the race car, but she's just trying to make these women socially aware of how in right. their bubble they are. Um, I, like right. they're unaware of what goes on in culture or society or what anyone right. else's plight is. And so I thought that was extremely rude for her. And then to go on Carlos's platform, I mean, I love what Carlos is doing for a lot of these reality stars who fell from grace. But I think that by you <laughs> platforming everybody, you think that everybody starts to believe that their opinion matters. And Nene at least opened the floodgates because I mean, you was getting real C-list, D-list, E-list characters on that show before Nene Leaks told him, I'm not doing this <laughs> virtual thing. Set up the studio, and then I'll right. come. And then Nene right. came, and then Cynthia came, and then Kenya came, and then all these other right. girls started coming. You got all these other shows. So I think it's interesting for Anna Marie to now develop a voice after her storyline. I don't know how she even got that diamond, because from what we've seen from the season, she really didn't deserve it, because she did nothing but try to antagonize Crystal. Crystal hate her ass up. I don't know if y'all cuss on here, but I do. Sorry. Um, <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> perfect. Um, enough about Anna Marie because, I mean, even for her to say, oh, it's Anna Marie and it's a Dutch. I'm, I have a thing about people who live in black skin but raised by white people because they are really detached from exactly what it means to be black in America or black anywhere else. Okay, so done with her. She's an off-brand Tanya Sam. Um, <laughs> next uh, is... And, um, also, and also, the point that you made about her needing Garcelle to back her up, Garcelle brought on Cherie as an actual friend and didn't need Cherie to back her up last season. So because don't, don't did. act like you couldn't fight your own battles, especially when it was battles that were deserved because you were acting irrational. Right. Hey Amen. And what we used to say, next caller. Because next caller. We love you, <laughs> um, you but get on down, baby. We got to drop when you. It, when it comes to Candace and Chris, y'all, some personal feelings aside, I can be unbiased in it because y'all know how I feel about Candace. You know, well, personally, we know, out. but Thomas, we know how you feel. But okay. just very briefly, explain to the viewers how you feel. Yes. Okay. So, um, when it came to me and Candace, I had as a fan. I'm a fan of the show. I'm from the DMV area, raised in Prince George's County, Maryland. I have still, um, you know, friends and people who live in that area. I went to college in Baltimore, so I'm really kind of connected with that area. I had as a fan, as a, a part of the viewing audience, you know. I was like, wow, like as, after watching this show from season one, being proud that they went back to the DC area to try to, you know, do a housewife show. It's like, okay, something finally stuck. Season one, season two was great. Season three came. I'm like, okay, Candace is a funny girl. But then, you know, we start to see things change in season four. And I'm like, wow, like the way that people forget the things that she's done to try to make her seem like she's the victim all the time, I think was like extremely unfair. So I had tweeted one day, I was just like, oh, like Candace is like one of the worst casting decisions. I wish she was never cast. And I used the tense cast with ED at the end. And so her wanting to be a linguist person was like, oh, um, this you already used the, the past tense of cast. Um, you would know that or something if you wasn't Tom or whatever. So we started going back and forth having words. She didn't know that I had supporters of people who, you know, kind of fuck with me. So they was getting at her and her comments, like, why are you coming at him? He just sharing his opinion, just like all, all the rest of the- Uh-oh. Candace did it. <laughs> <laughs> He's in the airport, so we're going to give him time to come. There you go. Okay, we back? Yeah. yeah. Atlanta, get the Wi-Fi together in here. 
Don't be doing my city. <laughs> But we, so long story short, we didn't have having words on Twitter. She called me a trashy boy from Baltimore. Um, oh my which god! I didn't know then that. prompted my mom wanting to get involved, and it was going to spiral out of control. She started calling people around Baltimore, trying to get tea on me to see who I was and what I was about. She was mentioning our mutual followers on Twitter, and so her Twitter behavior. It is a history that goes back. It isn't just current. It is years past that her Bad Twitter blood. behavior has gotten her in trouble. And so me and her had words. And then when she came in the clubhouse one day, I read her for filth. And she was scared. She didn't want to get on the stage. And so that's kind of like what we have been. Um, but when it comes to her this season, I think that um, she's a shell of herself. When she first came onto the show, she was a vibrant personality, singing all the time. She was really exuberant, joyful. She was always smiling. And I think she let these women get to her. And I always think, I think it's a lot of karma. And she was not, she never admitted because she cannot admit to doing Monique wrong first. If we want to rewind, let's rewind to season four when Candace knew that Monique and Giselle were not cool. When Monique had a conversation with Candace about how they felt about Katie being a free spirit and used the term Amistad. And they used the term Amistad as in free spirit, which is what she was referring to, not Amistad as in a slave. So when Candace took that information and brought it back to Giselle, and she said that Monique used the word Amistad, Giselle said like a slave? And Candace shook her head and said yes when if you rewind and go back and see that that was not what they were talking about. This is what started the, the rift between Monique and Candace. Because if you think about it, they also had a sit down that same season on the opposite sides of a, of a table at a restaurant in DC <laughs> when they were trying to parse through the issues. They hugged it out at the reunion. Girl, I wish I would have called you. I wish I would have called you when they were all white season four. It's supposed to get over it. And so she did wrong first. People forget that. And then they're now trying to say, oh, well, you know, Candace has always been the one to get attacked. No, she, her mouth is reckless, one. She writes checks that she can't cash. And I think that she is elitist and she is, if anybody's close to white proximity, for her to say Giselle's white looking ass and close proximity when you got a white man sitting behind you, it was extremely, it was extremely tone deaf. And I'm glad that she apologized for it at this reunion because she was so unapologetic last reunion when Wendy brought it up and said that that language that she used kind of invalidated the point that she was talking about with colorism. I think Candace has a really huge issue with her own skin color because she is obsessed with the light skinned women on the show and the way in which they move. And I think it has really, it has infiltrated the fan base and it has made our show not fun anymore because it is a political battleground every episode. People are buying bots, NECA can't tweet, Wendy, it's, it's, it's just so much. And it's just not fun like it, it used is. to be, you know? Like I miss it that. Do you, ever that. That it can, do you ever think that it can even get back to what we loved? Because I feel though, as though, the thing that got Potomac to that big, big moment where it started to get viewed like numbers like Atlanta in a sense, because it never will, but in a sense, was season five because we knew that that big fight was coming at the end of the season and people wanted to t tune in for that. So it, toxicity was what made people tune into this show. True. You know, a fight was what made people tune into this show. Before that, Potomac wasn't really doing big numbers like that. Like, so I think, me, I think, that I think it's the four crazy of us, because I was the only ones watching it back then. I missed the Etika season. I love, I love season no, one. And, and, I and like I think Etika it was Potomac, great, but I, but I think like numbers wise, it was not bringing in the numbers, right? So I think that the women saw how a fight brought so like, a fight brought this little show to the number one Real Housewives show for one year, even beating Beverly Hills. And they thought, this is what we needed to do. This is what we need to do to stay on top. And I think that that is the risk that a lot of shows that peak go through when it comes to like whatever moment makes them peak in pop culture. They think that they need to attach themselves to that moment in order to live and keep redoing that moment when in reality, we want to move on from that moment because we already are with you. So I think that they played too much into the toxicity that was curated in that one moment from season five. I think but, that but the way that they... I would agree with you if they didn't have that come to Jesus meeting with Monique at Karen's house when everybody right. was staunchly against physical violence and they made it seem like there was no 
justifiable reason for why anybody should get and then justified it when it happened to Wendy. The, exactly. Season. So yeah. I think it was weird. Right. So I think it, it kind of is. It kind of is like that to your point because it was like okay, well, it was it, it happened with Candace and Monique. Well, we don't like Monique, so we gonna ostracize her. But then it happened right. against somebody that they didn't like. So now we are okay with it because it was Mia doing the same thing. So I I think for some of the women, I definitely don't believe that Karen is okay with violence. She doesn't want the toxicity or the violence. I also don't think that Giselle is pissed for the violence. I think Giselle was just a messy, bitter woman at some times, but I don't see Giselle getting into any physical altercation. She's just going to laugh your ass right, out right, like she did right. Candace last Sunday. So I think that to your point, though, they, they did like the toxicity and they did and that mess with Kiarna, like, Ashley needs to pay right. for that. I think, I don't, I don't know. See, this is the thing. I, I have an issue when we make people responsible for other people's actions like we make we hold phaedra accountable for portia saying what she said yeah. on, on on the on the thing we we're holding okay. ashley responsible for deborah putting her hands on someone else yes now, ashley brought her around but she didn't make her punch that girl but here's the caveat to that thomas and i agree with you on that i cannot mm -hmm. we me and tori just said we can't tell our mama what to do we, i cannot tell kim what to do by the way my mama just called me in the middle of this because she knows that i'm on the show <laughs> And I just have to say happy birthday, um, Auntie Janice. So, oh, happy birthday! Janice. Happy birthday! Um, happy birthday. But, um, I agree with you that we should not be responsible for people's actions when we don't know. Now, can't nobody convince me, and nobody gonna move me neither on it. I feel like that was a setup. I feel like she had Deborah there when those cameras went down. They were gonna press Candace. Kiana was something that was not a factor that was uh, a, a, a thing that was factored into the equation. Like most times the, the outlying factor never is, you know, thought about or considered. But in my opinion, based off of the way that that conversation was going from what we saw that was filmed and aired, I do feel like they were going to put the heat on Candace. And I just, I do. So in that, I, in think that's that's a sense, fair assessment. I feel that she's I, responsible in that sense. I think that's a fair assessment to make because, I mean, it's an adult assessment to look at the whole thing because I don't know, because I don't know if they, my memory serves me correctly, if they actually put whose name it was that said our camera's down. I did hear someone say our camera's down. I don't know who it was that said I don't remember it. Neither. It was but, Ashley. Okay, I, I don't know if they put it was who? They did. There, so, they put Ashley. Oh, they did. Okay, okay. So oh, shit. Yeah, there we go. So that, That's why that gives you a little bit more validity to it. But I also think that there's a point where in that altercation, like, it wasn't just a random club. They were there to support their friend for their... I don't want to call it a fashion line because I can't give it that much. Some but whatever. <laughs> yeah, thank you. They, they were there to support their friend. So I think it's it's... You're right, Chase. That they may had some preconceived notion. When I, do I think Ashley was a part of that planning? No. Do I think that the other light skinned girl that sat behind Ashley and the Nicki Minaj video and Deborah did it? Yes, I do think that. And the girl in the yellow who ended up pulling Kiana by the hair down. I think they did. It's like you know what I'm talking like. Okay, we're gonna get her when we go to Ashley event, so that you know, saying we all gonna be there at the same time. I think that probably was a conversation that was had, but I can't say that Ashley was a part of it. I just think Ashley just. Conveniently, always is that in in the mess. <laughs> she just she is. conveniently always. But I also that. think that cool. I also think that it was irresponsible a little bit because, and I'm so glad that they had that moment at the Monarch event where Karen kind of checked everybody and said, "We need to start being careful with who we bring around because at the end of the day, let's not act like we're not on a TV show in a place where a lot of TV doesn't happen. So a lot of people are thirsty to be on television. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Especially the Real Housewives, one of the biggest reality shows that gets the amount of numbers that they do so the women around our area already are thirsty to be on our show we know that from the casting that happens every year we need to be mm -hmm. careful and it kind of seems like it's always ashley's friends that kind of be a little thirstier than mm -hmm. others and are willing to go farther than others and i think that to a certain extent, we all know that when we bring friends around it's so that production can watch them and test them so if you're going to bring a friend around, please have some home training because these girls that are willing to be throwing hands and th mm -mm, that's just too much. To but also, production has, to, production has to take some blame as well, though. Because Absolutely. I think production, like, 
the production liked the fact that Candace had this ongoing thing with Sesame Street and that she played right. into it and they hyped it up. So production probably wanted her to come around as well to talk about the Chris thing, to ask her about calling for Sesame Street to, and to invoke some kind of something from her. So I think we need to lay blame at production as well because we do know from the they instruct some of these women to do some of these things and some of them stand on it and also to say, not I'm not it, doing it. kind of like annoying. Yeah, like, so this it's, it's, it's two ways to see it, you know what I'm saying? And I think that neither way is wrong but i would hate to think that it was to be on the cast of somebody to then intentionally bring somebody to bank them on the jump i think that is so wrong and you are right to run right. into karen karen as the matriarch of the group was right to say hey we need to even if we don't like each other we didn't let nobody come in our bubble and fuck right. with us you know what right. i'm saying like right. we can fuck with each other and we can fight each other kill each other if we want to right. but nobody else outside should be able and to wendy and wendy was instrumental in that too and i think that I, it was it was good. That's why I, I kind of like Wendy because even though she has very strong views on how she feels about some of the women in this group, she mm -hmm. is reasonable enough to say, even though we may not see it eye to eye, we can in this moment of sisterhood support each other because what we're not gonna do is try to let someone infiltrate this situation that we got going on. Like, yeah, we don't mm -hmm. like each other in the show, but I'm not gonna let someone like come and disrespect you. Um, one question that I have for you, Thomas, though. So we already know that Candace is not coming back. Who do you think mm -hmm. she got the boot next? Mm. Love that you asked me this. And I'm gonna answer this and I'm gonna answer the first question that you asked that you asked me too about if they can get that they can return. So I think that who should get the boot next on the show is NECA. That's what I NECA, said. <laughs> NECA, I'm so sorry. And I there hasn't been a one season housewife on Potomac yet. But Neck is about to make history because it just didn't <laughs> give. <laughs> it just did not give. I mean, for you to be a lawyer and no one knew that, like for Andy to not even. Uh oh, oh. Neck did it. Neck did it. <laughs> Atlanta did it, honey. <laughs> so, uh -oh. now, I love, I love ATL. I, I, I should be there soon, honey. I'm gonna wait. You talking? I'm gonna bring you down and bring you up. We can't hear you. I mean, he's going off. He's going off. He's going off. <laughs> he going off. Good Lord. Hold on. He's still going up. Okay. Can't okay, hello. Hello. Oh, mute yourself, honey. <laughs> He's going to come out and come back in. Um, <laughs> baby, he said Nick was going to make history. Um, You know, listen, that's Thomas. And I, I you call up here. I'm not going to cuss you out. I'm going to let you say speak your speech. Y'all know that. Because I let Sean come up here every time she want to call. And I <laughs> never agree with Sean. I need to go too, so I'm gonna let I you finish so. your show. Thank you so much for having me. Tori, it was so yes. nice seeing you. I know. And to all of the listeners, I'm so happy that you guys are on the show. This is the show to be at. This is the show to listen. Shays, I love you. I love you Bye, too, y'all. Make sure y'all getting all y'all flight from the Thank reality you. rundown. Y'all know where to go. All right, Thomas, go ahead and finish your um, yes. next yes. Yes. Uh, Thomas. Up, oh, up, oh, up. Oh, again. Never got him again. Oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, I got you again. <laughs> Nick, I got you. Oh, he's going off. Oh, Tom is going off, child. Oh, Lord. Okay. Hello? No. <laughs> Nick, I got you. <laughs> Nick, I got you. <laughs> Sean, you know you're not a problem. I love you, Sean. Let me tell you something. The reason why I like to just say Sean's name is because that's my way of connecting with her or like some of y'all, y'all, <laughs> my regulars. Y'all my day ones. I'm going to call you out by your name. It's almost like in church. And you be like, hey, you know, you da, 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 or Chase or whatever, right? But I love Sean. Y'all know I love Sean. And I said it once, Sean, you might want to clip this because I'm never going to say that again, okay? Uh, but y'all know I rock with Sean. Let me get, we uh, rock with all of y'all. I love everybody. Katie was in can y'all hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's thing I got you, dog. <laughs> you can hear me? Can y'all hear me? Yeah, we hear you. Okay. <laughs> what you were saying because you was going off chat you was going off oh. so I was saying that I think that it, it was hilarious that Wendy has four degrees and none of them are in law so when Andy asked her the law question and then Giselle was like Neck is the lawyer it's like n nobody even realized that she was even there that's how irrelevant she was to the entire season and so I think that for her to come on with an agenda her and Lebe because Lebe is honestly who she need to be watching out for because Lebe trying to take her spot Neka is out of here she moved to, from LA to Potomac for nothing because she's not going to have a job on Potomac after this season because it was and her makeup was terrible on her we know oh my god up. it was real bad i'm just like girl you're wearing my shade and you got like, you look they great. was calling her fashion fair 
They said her her makeup is casket ready. <laughs> yeah, she was definitely casket sharp. <laughs> I will say that um, that they don't have to worry about being cast as long as she got them coat bottle glasses on. No, she need to give them to me. Um, yeah, she 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 was a mess. But yes, Nick, Nick needs to go next. Um, and um, I think I think Wendy should stay. And I think to answer Wellington's second point, and I'm gonna be done. Is I think the show can return to form. I think that there is some resolve that could happen between Wendy and um, Giselle. Because I don't think that the issues was even that deep. I wish that Giselle had the gall to go and tell Wendy about the shit that they thought about, you know, Wendy changing her body instead of Ashley. Why did Ashley have to come and then tell her? Giselle should have been the one to have that conversation with her, especially as your soul, especially y'all should have been able to have that connection and get back. I think Giselle and Candace's beef is far beyond like coming back. I mean, the yeah. shit that Candace said to Giselle last season of the reunion was unforgivable. But I don't think that Giselle and Wendy have any real hatred. I think there's just a strong dislike and because of the way that Wendy ate Giselle up with the, you had a whole tummy talk that you keep Jamal for season six reunion was just too far for her. But I don't think that they would be on the punch. I think they all can, you know, get back, especially if it's gonna be Karen, Wendy, um, Giselle, Ashley, Robin allegedly or unallegedly, I'm not sure. I think that they could be for sure. Maybe Robin has to go so that Giselle can be, you know, hey, you need you need to, you know, second seat your girlfriend, your best friend not coming back. Maybe you need to reach across the aisle and start to, you know, be a little bit more. No, Ashley's gonna, gonna be her lap dog. Well, I was gonna say I, I would charge that more so with Giselle in regards to Giselle and Wendy because yes. Wendy was hitting her hard and she was mm -hmm. hitting her boom, boom. But you started it. Yes, she did. Giselle, you started it. And you started it. And then when you say uh that the, the issues are not so much they can't come back from, if it's my remember if it's my recollection and memory, um, Wendy has attempted on more than one occasion to speak to Giselle, to reach out to Giselle, and Giselle mm -hmm. has shut it down. So I, I like think there was something when she came point. to the when they came when she came to the GNA launch event and Wendy, which is which is being the bigger person, this is why I, I have a soft spot for her. She I didn't like her season five because she came with that leader's edit. Well, I didn't like her season five at all. Like season six. But I think she's she also was realizing that she don't really have no allies, honestly. I don't even think her and Candace is real friends. Her and Karen starting off on the on the wrong foot. She only got cool with Karen season six because I mean you and Giselle falling out, you and Robin falling out. Like who else you gonna be cool with? But I think it was really cool for her to say, you know, congratulations to the launch of Giselle. And Giselle, even though she was being, you know, her bitchy self about it, she still she said, you know, thanks for that. Oh, I appreciate that's what she said. So I think they're baby steps. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I'm not saying that they're going to be able to make up tomorrow. We're going to see them on the first episode of season nine again. But I think there is something to, you know, look forward to maybe. I, I mean, think I that if we get that, it's because Giselle got second chair at that reunion and she doesn't want it again. That's what I honestly think. No, but I, you know where I got to disagree with you at? Who? Um, Thomas. Okay. Mm -hmm. is... There is a thing with her. She has the pretty privilege, but there is that there is a little bit of a proximity to whiteness that she really gets on my nerves with. And that's throwing rocks and hiding her hands and then acting like a victim. That's stuff white women do, and I don't like it. And that's the thing, and I'm going to say it because mm -hmm. it's true. I got to back you, Tori. You want to know why I got to back her? To everybody in the in the atmosphere, all the people watching and hanging in with us, it's like the audience keeps going, so thank you all for tuning in. But the reason why I'm going to back you, Tori, on that is because I think that she is aware of her proximity due to the comments that she made way back in season one that she knows that she could be white passing, but she actively chooses not to. Yeah. I'll, I will give you, I'll give you that. I will ask you, though, what mm -hmm. situation, and just for me, because I just want to know, what did she say? What, what, what situation she played victim in? All oh, of them. Story B's coming. <laughs> <laughs> All of them. So I think she leans into villain more than victim. I don't think she's a victim. I think she. Well, let me say this, Thomas, right? So, one issue that I had was her conflating uh, Candace liking colorism comments with her receiving death threats. Yeah. Now, I'm going to have to push back on that only because okay, the, de the death threats that she talked about specifically mentioned colorism. And before, let's be honest, colorism was not a part of the social media discourse of Potomac until around season five. 
because even, when it was introduced. Because but, even then, they weren't even trying to consider Monique dark skin, and they weren't even trying to because they weren't even trying to consider Monique a part of the brown girls. They were trying to make Monique be a light girl, and I really remember that because Monique was they Andy had kind of touched on it a little bit. This is before they had went full fledged into it in season seven about defining what colorism is X Y Z. But I do believe that there is some merit to what y'all saying about yourself, especially with the blonde hair, the blue, the the green eye situation. I believe that even with Robin, her taking her DNA test and finding that she's more European than she is black. Like, I think you know, even with the way they were coming at Katie about her, like the whole system, like you think it's and they would have colored yeah, you're not black enough. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I agree. I agree with. I agree with you on that. I just the victim thing doesn't sit right with me with Giselle because I don't ever see Giselle as a victim. You know what I'm saying? I I, I, don't, I have to. I don't just, see Giselle as a victim. We want to agree versus Monique. She right. did act like a victim. <laughs> Well, we're not she, agree, disagree. That's all she right. Act like a, she act like a victim to Chris because Chris's comments about wanting to turn into a woman and slap the shit out of them was inappropriate. And I agree who he was coming from as a man and your child, but you let your wife handle that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to, as a man married to a woman, be fighting no women battles. Let your wife handle it. And, and Monique had no problem handling yourself. I right. think I think she was being a victim to that. You know what I'm saying? But I don't think she was a big victim to Monique. You know, she she was just it was uncalled for calling that tacky ass security there, the same security that was there at Karen House. But I don't know. I just don't see her as a victim because I know she's a bitch, you know. So and I, I actually kinda like I actually kinda like the bitchiness. Ooh. And and Ooh. I and I'm only saying that as someone who did not like her season five, as someone who did not like her season six, and I started out loving her, and I can be unbiased and say Giselle was wrong as fuck season five, she was wrong as fuck season six, she was wrong as fuck season seven. I don't think she was wrong for telling Candace that she felt uncomfortable with Chris. She was wrong for waiting for the cameras to do so. That's what she was wrong at. She should have said that, hey, I didn't feel comfortable with your husband was drunk. He asked me to go into the room to have a conversation. I didn't feel comfortable about that. She didn't have to wait until cameras started rolling around to do it. Now I'll give you all that. I'll say she's calculated as fuck. As fuck. Well, they said they met up and came up with that storyline. That's what that's what the streets. You know, I hate to leave. The word on the street is. (laughs) I hate to live from another platform because y'all know I don't bite. But there's a popular phrase coined by this uh, young woman who were letting up on the stage, Jasmine, and this is my square. And as far as this square is concerned, fuck Giselle. Hey, Jasmine. (laughs) Uh, My co-host, by the way, on. Uh, bold and bougie, which we are going to do seven and eight. Um, and that's the finale. So we're gonna be having seven and eight. Um I'm wait, gonna jump, I'm gonna jump off, guys. But Tori, okay. it's nice connecting with you nice again, Jazz Man. I'm looking forward to seeing the hearing the commentary. Chase, I will text you. I am in Atlanta until tomorrow morning. So if you want to come oh, out to the Dockery Factory, I might be at the Dockery Factory doing a something. Okay. So no, we're gonna set something else up. We're gonna set it up. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Me and Jasmine, me and, oh. yeah. Um, so you were talking the whole time and you were on mute. Oh, I said, yeah, so, who the fuck is this I'm is sorry, we're being rude. We just couldn't hear you. But okay. uh, yeah. I got the No Chaser team up with me. Um, and uh, <laughs> so that was a cute little clubhouse reunion. But Jasmine, I know you got something to say. So the floor is yours, darling. Honey, I've already said what I had to say. Who the fuck <laughs> does Giselle think she is? Giselle has three necks. She has cankles. Ooh. And... You know, I look unkept today because I've been at work. So <laughs> you look fine, honey. I wear my hat all the time. <laughs> no, honey. Somebody gave me comments and said these hoes look unkept. Why they so mad at just no? Okay, we're not gonna transfer that in jail, but let me tell you. Okay, something. but no, I just you know I'm always Team Candace. Like I'm not even just. I'm I'm not gonna call her underdog anymore. I'm just gonna say that I understand her. And I think that Giselle gets away with too much. And I also think that, you know, um, you know, the break that she's taking is warranted. So I don't really don't have much to say outside of what, what, what you'll hear on Lean on um, the next two episodes. But everybody knows I'm Team Candace. This is my square. You can't beat me up. <clears throat> yep. Period. Yep. Thank we you. don't do Giselle over here. We don't. I mean, Giselle gets away with way too much. And the laughter, you know, some people thought it was funny, but I just thought it was just showing her. And I'm calling Andy Cohen to the carpet because he let too much stuff fly. You were the I mean, moderator. Yeah. Get control yeah. of the situation. That was not cute. It yeah. was very mean, girl. And, you know, this coming from the least interesting heifer on the cast. 
Oh, yeah. besides NECA. Sorry. Well, you know, people say that Andy doesn't really like Candace. So I think that um, that goes with the brand of Andy when it, in reference to Candace. So I don't really know. Wait, let me ask you this question. So how did you feel about him ushering Wendy and Candace out on the uh, TV show? I mean, the uh, talk show um, to promote, I guess, what, the reunion, the rest of the season? How do you? How did you feel about that? Um, I don't know which. I don't. What did Candace oh, say? Oh, they they were on what show? Tamron Hall. Oh, uh, okay. I, I, I forgot. Mean, no, I think it was Kelly Clarkson, right? Kelly, Kelly Clarkson. Oh, I mean, he, I just um, escorted. Me. I think it was a message. I don't know what. I think he was trying to convey a message that you know we we hear the colorism conversations Damn. going on. And I am going to be out here with them to show that I stand in solidarity again with them, that we won't allow that on this platform. We don't condone it, even though um, you condone it by continuously employing Giselle. Yeah. And what did you think, Tori, since you're raising the question? Yeah. Um, similarly to you. Sean um, says damage control, A1. I, yeah. I, I agree. I agree, I agree with, with Sean with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's very I, true. I want to, you know, I'm very silly all the time. You know, I don't really take a lot of shit too serious. But at the end of the day, like, you know, people can, you know, disregard the colorism stuff. You know, if Ann didn't feel like it was a, such something that should be addressed or something that needs a face to it or needs, you know, damage control, I don't think he would have walked out with Candace and Wendy. Um, but, you know, you, even after our shows, we get so many like we get a lot of hate we get a lot of hate we and do. it it definitely doubles down on us when it comes to colorism um yes you know, me, and a, me and asia get a lot of hate because we're chocolate yeah. women yes. and we we get told that we're ugly or we're not cute enough to be talking about giselle or anything of what? the nature i mean sister <laughs> Sister. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm not laughing at you. <laughs> no, no, I, I don't it. think. No, it's so hilarious. We're referring. So we do we for years consistently. If you guys don't know, because we have viewers from everywhere. There's a platform called the Lean. Yeah. And we lean in on the of the seasons. Um, Jasmine is a part and has been for years at this yeah. point a part yeah. of their Real Housewives uh, Potomac panel. Um, me and her co-host the Married to Medicine panel over there. I'm a part of the Beverly Hills panel over there. And uh, most recently over there on their Monday night review, uh, there was some comments left um, that were not flattering to in regards to her. And I, was it Asia as well? It was Asia, yeah. I mean, and Asia as well. Who you guys will be meeting yeah. um, if you haven't met her already. She'll be a part of the Summer House recap. So Asia, um, it was not flattering. Um, and That's so disgusting. this is what we're referring to. And even me on my end, I've experienced as a fat black yes. queer man. Yes. I've been attacked on all ends of the spectrum yes. on that platform to the point where like, I just was like, I can't go on. Have me in the bed like Robin. Catch. I know. Jesus. And it's, it's so, so, I mean, I have. Well, it be your own people. Well, it be bots too, but it be yeah. your own people sometimes yeah. too. And I get it. Like, but I, you know what? On my Twitter page, I don't have my face on it, so they don't know. <laughs> um, but it's disgusting, and I I've said it multiple times, right? I've been on Twitter, and the 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 bots and the nasty, the hateful comments that they make about uh, Wendy and Garcelle. Oh yeah, they're nasty. Yeah, they're nasty. Insane, insane. Yeah. And so, furthermore, and I'm gonna bring this up one more time, Chase. That's why I'm upset with the Anna Marie thing because then here come a whole bunch of white people saying, see, this is why we don't like Garcelle. See, right. we're not the only ones. So you let this white, this black woman validate how they feel about Garcelle well, because what did she say? Oh, well, she sorry. pulled the race card. And, well, and that's exactly what they say. You know well, what sorry, I, mean? I know you're not aware um, because I reviewed a whole season um, on another platform of the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Yeah. Um, but I said, when she goes, uh, when she uh, negates a black woman's stance, it give, it opens the door for wow. trolls, naysayers, haters, uh, racists, mm -hmm. all of those, D, all of the above to come in and do what they did. Yeah. And so it was conflated by some viewers that I was saying that all black people have to stick together no matter what. Okay. Now, I do believe that in my heart that we should all stick together no matter what. Okay. But 
That's not what I was saying. Even though I believe that, I am rational enough to know that right is right and wrong is wrong. So if she was wrong and she was called out about being wrong, then even though I may not like it, it's nothing I could do about it because you're wrong, right? But she wasn't wrong in that instance. So for you to willingly, purposely throw yourself in there and throw a wrench into that, it, it spoke a lot to her value, uh, her, uh, her character, her values. And then when I found out she was Canadian, I said, well, whoop, there it is. Oh, That's there why. it is. Right. And I have nothing against Canadians. I have one of no, those so bad. But I think that there is a difference in the Black American experience. And I will always say right. that to the end of me, there is a difference in the Black American experience. I do want to say In that. America and outside of America, the way that Black people are looked at, even by our own Black people in other places. Oh, the I Black Americans, we just... You know, we are, they view us as the bottom and, you know, that's their viewpoint. Let me, before we move on, can somebody read that comment for me? I'm over I'm here, over here because, <laughs> oh my, I'm, I'm, because I'm, you all know about that chase wig. Can he pull that referee whistle out and that short wig and get the blonde in his eyes? I'm not going to put it on today. I should have put it on when I was reading Robin ass, but. Put it on. You definitely should have. You should have. <laughs> I think that because you would have shook it. I want to say, been over here crying. Kimberly Dupree, I I really hope that you go ahead and push, you know, push that call in button just one more time. Give Kimberly them the Dupree. Yeah, I want Kimberly Dupree Dupree to call in and give her. Who's um, I mean, she's she's, one, she's put some in the comments. I just oh, want thank you for have, commenting, Kimberly. Yeah, I want her to have the ability to say what's on her mind. Yes, the feelings are valid. Um, however, um. Yeah, please place the link so she can go ahead and call in. Um, but okay, there's the link. Yeah, no, I just feel like feelings are valid, but I think that there is um a level of I don't want to say respect, but I do think that there's a level of cohesion that should still go with black people. Um, I think Oh, no, this is good. I mean, Antonio is crazy, but and I just think that I just think that I want to hear her opinions on that a little bit more. She's kind of you know, kind of you know, saying, "Oh, this has mental abuse is harmful to yourself." Yes, don't hold your feelings in. But I want to hear a little bit more. Um, I like, y'all know I can't see, so I just honestly, I just yeah. pick comments. I can't see them. Well, Chase is blind, and they, and I have glasses. This, so Kimberly, um, you could join the link that Chase she has. has to get that herself link. together. And um, she's just here. to double back into it, though, like me and Asia have gotten so many. Um, me and Asia have gotten mean so tweets, many mean, mean, comments. mean comments about our complexion or just our unattractiveness when it comes to us saying what we feel. Um, and I just think that just goes to show you that, you know, when it comes to Giselle, that instead of just trying to fight tooth and nail to be right, that she should at least try to like learn a little bit as a Creole woman, because I'm also Creole. I'm also Jamaican, um, but I don't look like Giselle. Um, I've said millions, millions of times that Giselle is a beautiful woman. She gives typical, stereotypical Creole woman looking, you know, that Beyonce look. I really don't have a problem with her appearance. It's just about her character. Um, but people will go on and on about those things, and it just kind of just solidifies our, our viewpoint on colorism. Right. It definitely, like, Dream can say one thing, and we can say another, and it's oh, that four-eyed hoe look like Murdoch. <laughs> so <laughs> you're like, you, they want me out, <laughs> like, baby. They I have thick skin, but you know, I have thick skin. I know I'm beautiful. You know, honey, when I do these shows, I get off work, and I don't really be caring. But at the very end of the day, like, it just solidifies our fact. And I wish that Giselle would sit in her. Ooh. Oh, it came up quicker than it was supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> so that's. <laughs> Sorry, it was it, that was quick. I, I hold was on, mad. hold on. Just give me one. Just give me one second. No, please speak your speech. You were you were speaking your speech. I just I am actually done, but I just wanted to say yes that what I said. Hey there, on, can I talk? Yes. Yeah, well, okay. Before you do, thank okay. you for calling in. I do appreciate it. This I'm Chase. No Chase TV. Everybody's welcome. Everybody's allowed to okay. give their opinions. This is a safe space. Um, for you to do so, and then opinions occur as they may. So I want to thank you again for calling in. If you don't mind introducing yourself first, and then going ahead and telling us what you're thinking. Okay, hey, I'm Kimberly. I'm 40. 
I no, have, you don't have to I give up your age, but you look good for No, I'm sorry to give you my age because I think age factors in a lot of stuff okay, that's going okay. on with reality TV, right? Now. Okay. Okay, so I'm an 80s baby. Oh. I grew up with people saying stuff that was foul. Mm -hmm. My mother raised me, if they don't touch me, to let it go. I personally don't see a colorist issue on Potomac or a racist issue on Beverly Hills. I honestly see a I don't like you issue. And it's turning into a colorism or a racist issue. I don't like when Garcelle weaponizes racism. Because to me, that downplays the real races that we have in the world right now. I don't like people throwing out the colorism thing because that plays down. Because I can also take into account some of the other stuff that other people on the shows have said as well. So that's just my opinion. I don't see that problem. And I, <laughs> I just wish that the bloggers or you all, if that's okay to call you all that. I know Carlos King don't like being called a blogger. No, ma'am. I have a degree in that. Okay. <laughs> well, <I'm laughs> or a journalist. Listen, as long as it's not meant in a condescending way, you can call me anything as long as you're calling me. Okay. Okay. Or journalism. Uh, yes, that it's just, I, I wish sometimes the audience or <laughs> the people on the panel would be more in a range where it's different viewpoints. I don't like watching it where everybody agrees with everybody. I'm not saying argue. I'm just saying just a different perspective. I totally understand where you're coming from. And I will say this as somewhat, I guess, as the architect of this particular channel, I don't seek out people who have the same opinions. I just seek out people who have opinions and people who I know are dependable. I can depend on Tori B, even though we've gone way longer than we normally go, to be up here with me and do this at a time that may not necessarily be convenient for other panelists and guests that are on this platform. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, I can depend on Jasmine to give me what I don't, if you go, you may not watch Bold and Bougie. Me and Jasmine had a knock down, drag out disagreement on our last Bold and Bougie that we did together. We don't always agree. And mm -hmm. I'm sure the last one that we're going to do seven and eight, unless <laughs> by some chance there's a miracle, we're not going to agree on that one either. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so I totally am okay with not agreeing because I love the banter. I love that you had the 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 gumption, the guts to call in because if you feel like this is a platform or you call into platforms where everybody has the same point of view and you do not have that point of view, I'm sure that while it, we're not intimidating or not coming off or attempting to be intimidating, I'm sure that there could be some uneasiness about doing so, right? And mm -hmm. so again, I want to thank you for calling in, but that is not what no chaser strives to do. I was gonna call it the chase show, right? Okay. I mean, what I, me all the time, what I think, but when okay. I knew it, I work best in a group in a setting with people who have opinions that can elicit reactions out of me. I don't agree with Tori B at all, ever. Please. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm joking, <laughs> but you know, that's Tori yeah. B's thoughts and I respect her as a person and I love her opinion. And so Anybody can come up here and give their opinion. I didn't agree with half of what Thomas said, but I let him say it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, I let him say it because that's his opinion. And I want you to continue to come back to No Chaser to do so. So that's all I wanted to say. Um, as far as your thoughts on that, we're not going to agree. So I'm not going to go ahead and press the issue. Oh, but man. I will allow Tori B and Jasmine to speak if they oh, want man. to about it. But I personally... <laughs> don't agree and the reason why i don't agree is because i am a little bit pro-black right and so i don't mind saying that i am and it doesn't make me blind to certain things like okay pro-blackness to me right mm -hmm. does not supersede right and wrong right mm -hmm. so if pro-blackness superseded right and wrong even though i don't particularly care for anna marie right because she's black and she said a person made her feel this way, I would automatically take her side because I'm pro-black over right or wrong. However, I watched that episode backwards and forwards. I commented on that episode for weeks on the lean during our Real Housewives of Beverly Hills review. And from what I saw, she was yelling at her. So to me, <laughs> that was not microaggressive because she was yelling at her. Now, in the instance between Garcelle and Dorit, Garcelle was not being aggressive in that moment. So if I tell you, 
the reason why I don't like for you to call me aggressive is because historically it has a um, connotation of all black people being angry when there's something that is going on that is not fair to us, that it has those connotations. And I'm telling you, listen, I was not angry to you in this moment. I was talking just as everyone else was and you labeled me angry. And for you to like say that that's not the case, then I have an issue with that. Do you so, think Erica at times is aggressive? Yeah, because yes. I think she's aggressive. Yes. As Absolutely. Yes. Yes. No oh, one what? has that on there. That's the thing. Oh, oh, what? They, they don't say that about Erica. But I do. Yeah. No, not you all. I'm talking about. No, no, I know. I'm just saying. <laughs> but yeah. I like calling it all the way around. Well, yeah. Yeah. Oh, with Chase, don't but, agree with me like Mia. Oh, <laughs> All the way, Tori B. But Kimberly, I think that's the point, right? Mm -hmm. Because they don't label Erica aggressive when she's being so. But as soon as Garcelle speaks up, opposing opinion, Dorit labeled her aggressive. That is what we call microaggressive. Mm -hmm. I mean, but hey, this your square, sweetie. Um, no, no, I'm not. Do no, you, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. That's, how do you that's feel about the conversation that we're having? Because I, I want to make sure that I'm being, because I'm purposely choosing to not come in adversary with you, but to have a conversation with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you feel? Oh, no, I feel fine. Okay, I good. Like I just want to make sure. about the shows because yeah. my mother died in August, and she oh, was the one that I watched these shows with. Yeah. So I don't have anyone to talk about it with. Okay. Uh -oh. And I just hate Bro. how social media is right now. When it comes to these shows, I agree with you on that. It's, it's bad. trash. It's bad. It's really bad. Yeah, it's, it's, it could be excessive. I be up in there fighting with them in the comments. I told them, "Don't get on my page talking mess about Garza. I'm yeah. not tolerating it." But you got to also understand there's levels to racism. Yeah, you know, like microaggression is like maybe the first. It's like right? a it, What microaggressions are is like stereotypes. I had somebody at my job ask me if I had problems at home. That's a microaggression. Well, I live in Mississippi. Oh, Lord. That is, hey, you know what I'm saying? Born and raised. Right. Oh, Lord. I don't know if I could do that. But I will say, I'm from Chattanooga, Tennessee. I've never experienced it. My brother has. I personally have never experienced it. Well, it's I want all you to about consider being yourself open very lucky, that, Kimberly. It's yeah. all about being open to the education of it. You're yeah. not of a darker hue. I, I mean, I'm not, I'm, you know, my mom, <laughs> my mom was probably about Miss Tori's color mm -hmm. and having a very fair-skinned mother as a deeply chocolate child, it can give you some sort of, you know, like who's, who's little black baby is that? Right. And, you know, stuff like that. So I think we can all educate each other on these topics because if you haven't experienced it and I have, then, you know, I'm a dark skinned woman. Even if I speak up for myself, I'm automatically called aggressive. Well, but, I have cousins that are like vanilla. And yeah. when I was younger, I used to think that they act a certain way because they were like that. But it took growing up, my mother, my aunts educating us that we're all black. We all just a different color. And one time I even called my cousin a honky. I'm not gonna lie, I did. And that was a young age uh -huh. when I said that to her. Well, how old but, you think we are? Because we all ate babies on here, sweet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I just don't know who watching and everything, and I don't want them to report. No, you. no I, I totally yeah. understand. That. <laughs> yeah. I totally understand that. But mm -hmm. like seriously, like it takes having this type of dialogue. Mm -hmm. I've dealt with stuff where my mother is um your complexion. Um, what's your name? <laughs> Kim. Mm -hmm. Kim. Mm -hmm. My mother is a little bit darker than you. And I was in high school and my ex was the same complexion as my mother. Mm -hmm. And when she came into the door, he gave her a hug and everybody just assumed I was his mother. And it was like, oh, you know his mother? And I'm like, that's my mother. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like we all have different experiences. I'm by, I'm, I don't consider myself biracial. I'm black first. My mom is mm -hmm. black and my daddy's Puerto Rican okay. and part West Indian. But I'm black first. So you got to understand that, you know, when you hear other people's perspectives on it, right, you can kind of understand a little bit better 
Um, but, you know, I don't walk this earth thinking I'm better than anybody. I, like, I've had people say things about dark-skinned women. That's why I get so upset about it in front of me, thinking that is okay. It's not. Because my mama's dark. My aunties is dark. My cousins are dark. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's not It's not okay. Like, mm-hmm. I, I'm not better than anybody else because I'm light-skinned. And a lot of it comes from my very own men. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, what? This, oh, whoa. Oh, no, now, no, put yourself down. Not, Put yourself, put yourself <laughs> right, down. Right. I mean, I want to say this one last, last thing to you, Kimberly. Um, my mom passed away when I was in college. So it's, it's, I definitely relate to you, you know, on the things we used to watch together and, and, and having those, you know, relatability. So I, I definitely, you know, want to just emphasize that, you know, this discussion is just to just have. Um, so, but we all have, you know, things that connect us. And um, I mean, you will never know what it feels like to be this chocolate. Okay. No, and I would no. never know how it feels to be whatever y'all are. But at the end of the day, brown. We, I say brown. Oh, <laughs> just a little cinnamon. But at the end of the day, <laughs> we're, we're all black. black and we're all supposed to be able to have each other's back. Not, not you know, right or wrong is not even that. It's just being able to understand and um, not even sympathize, but just relate to different people's stories. Yeah. So, okay. Oh, one more thing I did want to say yes, in please. regards to the colorism. I okay, saw okay. colorism on Basketball Wives LA between mm-hmm. Evelyn and OG. I saw colorism on there. Yeah. Big time. It was. And it was. I, I look at Potomac and I compare it to what I saw on there. Uh-huh. And I'm like, I just don't see it on here. Well, you Let see me it. ask you a question, Kimmy. Mm-hmm. If, if Giselle had the same sharp tongue as Candace, do you feel as though that she would get the same backlash as Candace? I wouldn't like her. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I wouldn't. I my mother told me not, you know, to ignore stuff like that. So I actually like when Giselle is at the reunions and don't say anything. Just ignore them. My mother always told me if they don't hit you, don't let it bother you. So I kind of have that mentality. You can say whatever you want to say, and I just don't have to respond. I don't have to entertain it. Yeah, my mama said oh, slap. Yeah. Oh. No, <laughs> that's, that's, my mama <laughs> If they touch you, then you can go. Kimberly, huh? I don't know if you subscribe to this channel, but please like, okay. you know what I'm saying? like and subscribe. Uh-huh. I know I will subscribe. I <laughs> haven't really? yet. This, this is the first time I've seen you pop up on my thing. Okay, honey. Oh, Did you find up, us? We can, we I searched oh, Real Housewives of Potomac and it popped up. Oh, oh, yes, ma'am. up in the search. No, 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 where am I, I like this? <laughs> uh, listen, y'all. Um, we have really been up here a long time, and she, Kimberly Dupree, thank and she, she did it. Thank you, Kimberly Dupree, and uh, I, I want to say before you left, Kimberly, uh, my condolences to you, awesome. and uh, thank you for coming up here, sharing your opinion, and now subscribing. So I appreciate that. Um, and our last caller of the day, my doll. What's the going night. on, man? Tip. <laughs> And thank you for being so, like so a long time. So thank you for being patient. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. I've never been on anyone's like live or anything. So this oh. is my first time, but I comment on everything. I know. It's either Miss Main Tips or it's Amanda K because I have two different oh, oh. <laughs> profiles. Thank you. Oh Lord. <laughs> and you know I love you, so I have to make sure like one of my devices shows me that you're coming on. You love us, Amanda, or oh y- y'all. I started with the lean. <laughs> And then when I heard Chase had his own, I was like, I gotta get with the wig. Look at her. I love the wig. (laughs) The whole shaking, I'm like, what kind of (laughs) stuff do you put on to keep that wig on? (laughs) I'm about to cry. (laughs) Only for you. 
<laughs> no, there'd be half the time when I'm watching you doing your reviews. And I'm like, please put the wig on. Please put it on. <laughs> Only for you. I didn't get a chance to style it today. Man, I was yeah. Baby, it got a little cut. It got a little party. Oh, yes, I didn't get a chance to style it. Let me. Okay, if I love that, can go. What was so, I going to say? Baby, since before you start, uh, since uh, Kimberly Dupree was a new viewer from uh, how she found it, Mrs. I'm sure we got a couple of new viewers. If y'all don't know, if you see me put this on and shake your head, if you see it going like this, <laughs> somebody's about to get red, boo. Yes. That's what y'all need to know. That was for you. Okay, go ahead, baby. I'm crying. With the whole colorism thing, we're gonna. I'm just gonna say something really fast about it. But um, I'm light skinned. My mother's Belizean, but she's brown skinned, and she came here when she was younger, so she doesn't have the accent. But mm -hmm. her grandmother is half British, half. I don't know if you want to say black because she's Caribbean, mm -hmm. and her dad is fully Belizean, but he. I don't know if you want to call it afro Belizean, whatever you want to call it, because people these days want to always have like something, a, a term for something. And my dad, he's, his mother is half white. Anyways, so my dad's light skin, my mom's brown skin. When I came to Texas, because I'm originally from California, I'm light skin. So when I came here, people thought, oh, you're stuck up and you think you're better than everyone else because you're light skin. But when I was in California, I was living in the valley with a lot of white and Hispanic people. So I came on here, I'm like, I don't think I'm better than anyone. I'm trying to fit in with everyone. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it, it's hard because the dark, uh, I hate saying it, but the darker skinned females didn't like me because they thought I thought I was better. And then the people that were my tone, they had already friends out here because I came when I was in high school so they already had their click so it's like kind of hard so when i do see sometimes people are like oh you're light skin you think you're better i'm like no really i'm trying to fit in with everyone <laughs> i don't think i'm better but i do understand with the whole colorism thing because i noticed because i was light skin a lot of men <laughs> was attracted to me and I don't think I looked any better than anyone else, but I knew it had to have been because of the color of my skin. Mm -hmm. So I understand the whole colorism thing, but it kind of does suck sometimes when you're light skinned and you're not thinking about it and you get automatically, I don't know, get put into that box or whatever. Like you think you're better than everyone else. Mm -hmm. Anyways, I'm done with that. <laughs> now the 8.5, she pissed me off because <laughs> when she brought up the whole black card thing you know it irritated me because even though her and garcelle wasn't friends she shouldn't have brought that up because garcelle is already going through things on her instagram page with people and now that just gives them an extra reason to say something especially when it's coming from another black woman so now they're like see that's what i said when i said you know garcelle always talking about black people this that and the other so that pissed me off really bad. And I know y'all like Carlos, Carlos King. I like Carlos King. But when I saw that interview and then I was reading his comments, someone said that he doesn't really feel it for Garcelle and Sutton. So then when I'm looking back at the questions, it makes sense. Why would you ask her, do you feel like Garcelle wants to be the only black woman on you know, Beverly Hills? And then the whole playing the race card and him nodding and agreeing and then him saying, oh, I don't know. It was just irritating. And I didn't even get to see the whole crystal part because I stopped watching as soon as he was entertaining the black card incident. So it, it irritated me. And yeah. I still like, you know, Real Housewives of Potomac. I hope mm -hmm. they do better. But that whole interview just like really struck a nerve and I did not like it because they're both black people. Yeah. Garcelle didn't like go <laughs> for anybody. I mean, she was there. She didn't stand up for you, but she didn't go for her. Mm -hmm. So for her to go so hard into Garcelle, 
is irritating. And then she may not have stood up for 8.5, but that's because you're going against her friends. You're lying on her friend. You're saying things that her friend never said, calling her an alcoholic, saying she may be anorexic, and then blaming on your friend that has an anorexia disability is just crazy. So yeah. I don't know. I don't agree with all this stuff. Yeah, so it, it no, irritated me. But yeah, that's all I had to say. <laughs> no, but first of all, thank you for thank making you this the first place you ever called in. We appreciate that. <laughs> you sound like yeah. you ever called in with okay, you. Okay, so you know, hey, all right, we really appreciate that. <laughs> So it makes me putting on that wig for you even more special. Um, <laughs> but that wig. I wholeheartedly agree. And, uh, you know, um, what I will say is I think people want me to kind of like lay and fillet Carlos, and I'm not going to do that. Mm -hmm. But what I will say is um, great interview, <clears throat> not my girl. No, I That's like this. I oh. liked his other interviews. I didn't like that one, but I love the one with um, him and the married to medicine husbands. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. And then I, I like I, the one with uh, Mariah. Mariah, yeah. girl. Well, you see, he um, takes that interview approach with all of his subjects on his, you know, his guests, right? So mm -hmm. the approach to me was no different than his approach with anyone else. It yeah. just so happened to be, in my opinion, with someone who does not deserve the platform. Oh, okay. Period. <laughs> yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't see anything that he did differently. And mm -hmm. I think that the questions were in an effort, like I mentioned a couple of hours ago, because we're going to have a very long time tonight, yeah. uh, was in an effort to sprinkle that Carlos dust because, hey, I like her. You guys give her a chance. But guess what? You can give your baby some food and either your baby going to like it or your baby going to say what? Mm -mm, I don't like I, that. I right? mean, I, yeah, I understand that, but it was irritating because of the oh, question no, he did ask. The question, he, he knew what he was asking when he asked the question and he knew the answer when he asked the question. I like him, just like you said. I still watch his reviews and everything, mm -hmm. but... I didn't like the you questions. Like That's okay. Yeah, and listen, you're you're okay to have your opinion. I'm not throwing him up. That's all I'm. I'm yeah. not. I know people may want me to throw. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> but yeah. you know, as far as that interview is concerned, um, I'll be honest with you. There are certain people that he interviewed that I don't watch the interviews, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. And I watched it because I know that we needed to talk about that because mm -hmm. of the things that she said in the interview and the questions that she was asked. Yeah. So we went ahead and addressed it. But I mean, you know, as far as yeah, I made him watch numbers. it. He didn't want to watch it. I did not want to watch it. Torby made me watch it. Torby made me watch it. I'll admit to it. This is what said, the people want. To? This is what the people want. The people want it. So I Listen, literally Torby stopped. Me that interview, and I said, she sent me the interview, and she didn't say anything before she said anything. I said, what do you? No. <laughs> I stopped no. watching as soon as I heard the black card comment. Oh, I was, it was like, so I'm bad. Not. It was so and bad. So <laughs> Oh. Yeah, right. <laughs> it was so bad, but that's I'm Amanda. We the, we are channel of the people, and if y'all want to talk about it, we're gonna do it. All so, right. uh, Amanda, main tips. Thank you for calling in. Amanda, we really thank you. It. And uh, thank you for all of your support. You leave comments. You're in the live. You know we've yeah, we took Lawrence out one month, and you have been riding with us. You know, so I really appreciate that. All right, thank, thank you. Thank all you. right, bye, bye Amanda. All right, so my No Chaser team is up here with me. We're missing a couple of my other team. We got some contracts going out, so we're going to see who else is going to be on the team. You know? Ooh, yeah, that's uh, I'll get over it. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but these are two of my leading ladies, and so we're going to do the final sip. And the final sip is uh, where we give our final comments. I want to thank over 100 of you that have been in the room, at least on YouTube, Ooh, um, for hours. I appreciate that. I really do. Um, to X, aka Twitter, if you are there watching, thank y'all because y'all hold us down way more than I even like. I got on and Summer House is over a hundred views on Twitter for Monday. And I'm like, what? oh like, what's going on? So we're gonna show that Twitter community some love too, and grow that because y'all are showing us love consistently throughout the weeks. We got Bold and Bougie coming up, um, and uh, I don't know. I feel like y'all the final sip. Y'all can talk about what y'all want to talk about, but the final sip, should we do more than one night of happy hour a week? Because I feel like this is becoming the place to be. I know. They be really tuning in to the happy they hour. Love happy I, don't hour. Off, yeah. I don't get off work early enough. 
Uh, well, I mean, but listen, you've been up here with us for at least 30, 45 minutes at this point, so the door is always open, Jasmine. Yeah, I mean, I guess, yeah. I mean, I like to have a formal show, but I think that us being so informal and just, you know, coming up here and just vibing is what works. Yeah, y'all so. get the authenticity. You know, Chase yeah. having te technical difficulties yesterday. Okay, my, wait a minute. Chase? That's Monday, my, my oh, yeah. laptop's... Yeah. Stan fell. I, you know, we was all over the place. <laughs> and, I'm un, and, I'm, and I'm unkept. So it's okay. I'm not saying that. You is not unkept. <laughs> I am unkept. Good girl. Well, I, can't, I can't say that I relate, but. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. That wig. But anyway. Oh, yeah. <laughs> not the, the wig was unkept, child. Okay. <laughs> okay, I get that. I get that. It was a brush and go. It was a shake and go. Moment. Um, but uh, yeah, so did y'all have anything that y'all wanted to weigh in about our topics today before we go? We have actually, uh, colorism, you know, we got all forms and spectrums of that. And I'm I'm totally fine with that. Now you don't Sean have to agree with us. some more. I need something to watch while I, while I work. Sean, <laughs> you got here in the middle of the show, started from the beginning. Or, um, you know, Bold and Bougie is coming up. You can tune into that. And Sean, I hope you was watching Martha's Vineyard then. Sure. Oh my Sean God. was in the yeah, Sean was in the group. She was alive. Okay. Sean yeah. is a, a very loyal, dedicated viewer. Yeah. And that's why I give her so much because see, you people think of watching this that I'm picking on Sean, but if you go scroll oh, up no. those uh that group chat comment section, Sean said Chase wear your glasses. Right. Sure did. Because so she, she throws she it back, see. so she ain't no innocent victim, Cynthia. No, she because you can't see these comments. I can't see them at all. I would just, I would just tell but them. I saw that. <laughs> no, I wear glasses too, but I only need them for distance. So, oh, okay. well, all um, right, you guys. But did you have anything you wanted to add for the final sip? Or if not, we're going to go ahead and let them. I'm going to finish home. my prosecco, child. It's been two hours. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the anniversary edition. We probably will not be two hours next week. So, <laughs> okay, but it was flowing. The vibe was here. I think Tori B had the time. Jasmine had the time. I had the time this evening. So every now and then we'll give it to y'all how y'all want it. But uh, other than that, you got an hour max. So come on. With that being said, please make sure that you guys like, subscribe, uh, tune in, turn your notifications on. Thank you to our callers, Wellington of the Reality Rundown, the CEO, by the way. So you guys make sure you go ahead and um, watch their interviews that they did um, with Winter, as well as their latest episode of Reality Right After on their YouTube channel. Make sure that you guys go ahead and follow them on Instagram where they're huge. Um, I want to thank Kimberly Dupree, if I didn't already say that. Thank you to Amanda K, a.k.a. Main Tips. Yay. Thank you to Thomas J for tuning in with us and rocking with us. Tori B, thank you as always. Jasmine, thank you as always. And uh, to the viewers out there, thank you guys as always. And uh, oh, thank you for a great show. Thank you. We appreciate that. You, and uh, we're going to go ahead and log on out. And uh, oh, thank you to Antonio for being in the comments. Yes, Shantae Shantae for being in the com yes. I got to call the people out. Antonio, Shantae, Asia, um, Clinton, Morgan. everybody. Y'all know who y'all are. Thank y'all for loving on us, supporting us as you do every week. And we'll see you. Bold and bougie. Come on.